My people. My people. Yeah. Undefeated. 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 My people, what is going on? What is the business? How you feeling? How you doing? What is the business tonight? I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are feeling well. Hope you guys are tasting and smelling well and all that wonderful stuff. I am Coach Sean and I am here today to deliver the news that Alabama football is still Alabama football, man. I'm here today to deliver the news that even though the GOAT himself has retired, that Alabama football, man, is still alive and well and breathing and doing well, getting ready for a big scrimmage, getting ready to get our clack on and get ready to see what's cracking. You know what I'm saying? To say the least. Shout out to everyone in the undefeated, man. A day is near. The Indigo Hotel for me is near. You understand what I'm saying? It's like that. You know what I mean? Right on the Black Warrior River, baby. Tuscaloosa. That's the destination, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Please, if you guys will, on your way in, please hit those like buttons. I say buttons with a plural. Hit, hit the like button. You understand what I'm saying? And, um, you know, please, 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 please help your boy out on the way in. Hit that like button, man. Run the numbers up, as the fellas say. And uh, let's get this video cracking, man. So everybody come up in this joint, see what's cracking, see how you doing. Um, and let's get the word out, man. Alabama football is still here. Let's get the word out to the people that think it's not. That's my job. That's my duty to come in and give the noise and to scream at the top of my lungs that this is Alabama football and we still here regardless of what they got to say. First of all, giving big shout outs to Kyle, Kyle Henderson, KH himself. Big shout outs to Lady T who is usually on the wheels of steel, if you will, but been busy in the field, right? Shout out to Kyle, hardest working man alive, beard life to the fullest, you feel me? That's what it is, right? Shout out to Ty Hayes, right? The debater himself. Shout out to Merrill, right? The defensive guru himself. Shout out to Coach J, the best rants in the world. Shout out to the Buffalo Bills, too. A small shout out to the Bills, right? To my brother, Coach J. Shout out to Coach Smoot, right? In the field, getting his hands, feet, nose, ears dirty, right? All to bring the good news to everybody else, right? He do the dirty work while we do the light work. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it is, man. Shout out to the whole staff and shout out to the undefeated, man. Shout out to the undefeated. Give yourselves a hand. Shout out to the undefeated. The absolute best chat in Bama Lure, in any Bama station, on any Bama station that's out there. Who we got in here, man? Brittany B. What's up with you, Brittany B? Auntie Janet, Janet Forsett. I am glad you're in here. You understand what I'm saying? Patriot Life, the Don himself. What's up, Patriot Life? How you doing? Janet, Patriot Life, Kimberly Harmon. I am glad you're in here. Shout out to you, man. Jarvis Mitchell is in here. What's up, Jarvis? Rich B is in here. Deborah Ross Child is in here. What's up, Deborah? How you doing? Glad you guys are in here, man. Tap in. Chris from New Jersey is in here. One of the best callers it is out there. Um, Fun the artist says, shout out to them haters that thought Bama. Oh, oh, oh. She, Shout out to them haters that thought Bama was going to fall. Nah, we still here. Hey, Von, hey, I couldn't have said it better myself, broski. I couldn't have said it better myself. Shout out to them haters. Let's get them a shout out. Shout out to all them haters who thought Bama football was dead. Well, I got good news for you. In your case, probably bad news. Bama's still here, buddy. Bama's still here. The first scrimmage is right around the corner. Big, big shout out to Jalen Hill. Hope that young man is okay. Um, I read where he left left practicing an ambulance, man. So I'm hurt. I'm 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 hurt by that, man. It's a part of this game. 
I pray he's okay. Um, I pray he's okay, man. I really, really, really do. Um, you know, I, 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 I hurt for that young kid, man. I pray that it's nothing serious. That maybe he just twins something. But when you're in time, you hear ambulances and things of that nature, I, we automatically think the worst. So put a prayer in for Jalen Hill. Hope that young man is okay and uh, putting prayers in that everything is all right with that young man. Shout out to Jalen Hill and his family, for real. Um, Bama football on YouTube right here. We leading off tonight. That's the schedule if you guys want to see it right there. Boom. Check that out tonight. That's where we're going tonight. Um, and shout out to everybody else who's involved, man. Bruce Watson, what's up with your bro? Roll tie to you. Uh, KT, I want to know, do I still look like a professor in, in the room? You know what I'm saying? A math teacher? Man, I hate math. I hate to have to help my daughter with math, too. This old new kind of math, too. Ain't the math I grew up on. It's this long math, right? It's despicable. I think it's personally redam ridiculous. Not even ridiculous. Redam, yeah, put a damn in there. Redam ridiculous. The way they teach math nowadays, this long math is absolutely ridiculous to me. But I have to help her with it anyway. KT, what's up with you? I'm glad you in here. Laquasia Gordon, I am glad that you in here. The decor queen. You better holler at Laquasia if you want some decor. You better holler that she got the style. I'm trying to tell you, she got the style to make you walk a mile just for it. Shout out to Laquasia Gordon. She's in here. Clinton Howard is in here. What's up with you, Clinton? Much love to you, bro. Get roll tied, man. Buck is in here. What up, Buck? What's going on with you, bro, bro? How you doing, man? Marquita, my neighbor, is in here. I'm glad you're in here, Marquita, as always, for sure. I look for you right carla m bailey is in here i look for carla too glad you guys are in here man got janet in here too man janet fourth is, is, is in here if jan's in here i know we're getting it cracking this is what it is chance green is in here uh mark loveless is in here jv smith what up jv what's going on bro how you feeling man good to see you bro good to see you tim nolan what's up with you broski wendy six is in here wendy what's up bro how you feeling man Good to see you, broski. Good to see you for sure. Um, Mickey Pate, roll tie to you, brother. Roll tie to you, Mickey. I'm glad you're in here, man. At at her cash, at our cash. What's up with you, bro? At our cash. What's can I just call you cash? Because I don't know if I'm saying it right. I really like that name though. What's up, cash? How you doing? I'm glad you're in here, broski. Good to see you. Megan, roll tie to you, Megan. I'm glad you in here. Roll tie CVC was cracking. 2 a.m. views in here. What's up with your 2 a.m. views? Man, good you in here, man. Good you in here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, 2 a.m. I'm glad you are in here for sure. Um, listen, we got some things to talk about real quick. Luke is in here. What's up, Luke? Antoine Currington. What up with you, Antoine? The undefeated is in here. Antoine's in here repping. He he flossed out with the drip on him. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Antoine. What's up, Antoine? Glad you in here, bro. Antoine says, I don't want to bash other networks, especially those that support Bama Sports, but this channel is head and shoulders above the rest right now. Keep killing it, fellas. Antoine, it's because of people like you, bro. Is it because of people like you? If all of us is up here talking, we just some talking heads, man, the undefeated. When they come in and they see you guys in the chat, I'm telling you, that's what do it. The undefeated is what make this channel what it is. Kyle will tell you that. T will tell you that. Swook will tell you that. All the rest of the guys will tell you that. Um, Bo Williams, what's up with your man? Tim Nolan, what's up with your brusca? Oh, Augusta's in the house. What's up, man? Shout out to you, shout to uh, Georgia, Augusta. Uh, glad you're in the house, man. Thank you for tapping in, man. Van Gogh, the artist, my broski Van Gogh. What's up with you, bro? Good you in here, man. Thank you for that comment as well. Um, Catpool is in here. What's up, Catpool? You know what I mean? Gerard Jack Boy is in here from the deck. What up with you, Jack Boy? What's going on, man? Roll tide to you, man. Shout out to the deck, too, by the way. Um, Bison King Stan is in here. Roll tide from Canada. Whoa. Roll tide, Bison King, all the way from Canada. What's up, Mike? You understand? What are you talking about? Ain't that how y'all talk about it? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, Bison. Glad you in here, man. Good to see you, brother. Roll Tide to you, man. Chris Harper. Roll Tide, broski. What's up with you, man? Uh, Can we get a round of applause? Let me see what KT say. KT said, can we get a round of applause to Auntie Janet for changing her name? <laughs> round of applause to Auntie Janet. 
You know what I mean? So I, but I still like calling her Janet. Four Seth, I like calling the whole name. Matt Farms, what's up with you, bro? How you doing, man? Glad you up in here, Matt. Roll Tide as always, broski. Uh, Roll Tide CVC, as I said. Chris Harper's in here. Uh, who else we got here? Dino, what's up, Dino? How you doing, bro? Roll Tide to you, man. Dexter Wright, what up, Dex? What's going on, bro? Where you been, broski? What's up, Dexter? Roll Tide to Dexter, man. That man, no football right there. I love it. Dexter up in here. Shout out to you, Dexter. Michael Gadsden, man. What's up with you, broski? Uh, Javion Smell, Dr. 334 is in the house. 334, what up with you, boy? What's going on, man? John M is in the house, man. What's going on with you, Deborah Ross? Child is in here. Yeah, prayers for Jalen, Deborah. Prayers for that young man, man. That ambulance, when I heard the ambulance came out, yeah, that 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 that, that, that hurt my heart, man, because you know, you never want to see that, man. God, you didn't never want to, especially in a young man who's just not getting started like that, who's gonna have a big, big, big year. Prayers for that young man, man, for real. D Pickett, what's up with you, bro? Steve, how you doing? No, I don't have no updates on him. I, I looked around for some, D. I looked around for some, man, and all I could, I, 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 everybody that I looked around and saw said that um, they didn't hear nothing. Um, so I, I, I don't have any updates um, on him, uh, but just, just put those prayers in for him, man. Put those prayers in because anytime you see that old ambulance come out, it's a possibility that it couldn't that it's, it couldn't be good, right? We just want to keep him prayed up and um, you know, let the good Lord do His will. He'll be fine, right? John M is in the house. What's up, John M? Uh, who else we got in here, man? Who else we got in here? Chris Johnson. What's up, bro? Roll tired, bro. How you feeling, Chris? Good to see you, bro. Bentley boy, SBJ. Roll tired. He's a KT. <laughs> I'm going to put that up there for you so she'll see it. KT, you have an admirer. <laughs> Shout out to you, Billy boy. I like your style because uh, that's, some, that's some stuff I would have done right there. I like that. Jerry, what's up with you, Jerry? How you doing, bro? Glad you in here, man. K-Mac is in here. What's up, K-Mac? Jarvis. What up, Jarvis? What's going on, bro? Man, where you been, Jarvis, man? You got, man, what's up, man? That's my broski right there, man. My ad man, brother, man. Shout out to Jarvis, man. Glad you're in the house. Goofball is in here. What's up, Goofball? Jermaine Mims is in here. Jay Mims, what it is, broski. Glad you up in here, bro. Anthony Harris is in here. What's up, Anthony? What's good, man? I'm good. Blessed. Highly favored, man. The truth will always be in the details, bro. JJ is in here, man. Who else is in here? Jim Parker's in here, man. Quentin Crawford is in here. And Monica Hill is in here. Glad you're in here, Monica. Shout out to you and Roll Tide. Jay Townsend, OG Jay Townsend. You know what I mean? Patriot Life. What's up, Patriot Life, man? Joe Willie. There y'all go, man. Tap in and hit the numbers. Run them up. Do what you got to do. Hit that like button if you guys can on your way in. We're going to get it cracking, man. Don't know if you guys uh, know about it, but um, I want to. I wanna, we got a great sponsor, man. We got a great sponsor, right? These guys really, really, really help out the channel. If you guys are ever in the area, make sure you tap in with these guys. Um, absolutely outstanding. So listen to this commercial and make sure that you really, really, really take this information down. Very, very important. Shout out to the sponsors right here. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special Bamo football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com. Use the promo code Bamo. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is Bama. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right. If you want to go through the different levels, we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to 
upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama Football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Great commercial, great commercial. Shout out to these guys for supporting the channel. Um, really, really, really respect it and uh, love that. But yeah, man, you know, shout out to Jalen Hale, as I said. Um, Caden Vlogs, what's up with your broski? Roll Tide. Seen Lane Kiffin today, and, um, you know, Lane always going to say something to make some headlines. Um, you know, he it, in, in, in all actuality, it seemed like he was throwing a small shot at Caden Proctor. To me, in a way, um, he didn't say Caden's name, of course, but some of the stuff he said, it seemed like it was directed to Caden's way. Uh, you know, Lane said that uh, when he was asked about the transfer portal, Lane said, and I'll paraphrase, I won't exactly say what he said. He said it's a, um, let's just say he said it's a kitty, K-I-T-T-Y system. Take the K off and put an S-H in front of it. He said it's a kiddie system, right? It is. That's what he said. He said, now we're going to utilize it. In other words, he's admitting that, yes, I don't agree with the system and it's bad, but he said that Ole Miss is going to utilize it. He admitted that we're going to take part in it the same way everyone else does, um, and we're going to do the things everyone else is doing. He's pretty much putting it out there. Um he talked about how, like, just like the players do. He said, I'm not mad at the at the players. They utilize the system. And he said, we're going to utilize it. We're going to make the best roster we can with the rules that we have. That tells you what they're going to try to do. Um, he said, here again, it's really stupid. These are his words. It's really stupid. Um, you know, Kiffin said, it's, it's good for the players, maybe, but it's good for them financially. But I'm really not sure if it's good for them in the long run that they can leave anytime something goes wrong. They're just going to run no matter what. He said, I think what you're going to see is that people are going to get tired of where they're at. Go get their money, having never played a down as a transfer. And I'm going to transfer right back after spring ball, go somewhere else and get their money. So to me, that was a shot at Caden Proctor, right? I don't know nothing else that's going on that warrants those, uh, you know, those allegations that he he or those quiet comments that he just said, right? So Lane is speaking out against it, and a lot of players and a lot of coaches don't like it. But at the same time, what can you do? It's the system, right? You always hate stuff like this when you didn't win. If your school is winning and if your school is benefiting, oh, people love it. People love it. Um, he said, maybe it just happens with a high profile player. I'm going to go somewhere in January. I'm going to go get their money. I'm going to have never played a down. He just kept speaking on that. And I really thought it was it was directed toward Caden. Right. And, um, you know, Caden, Caden, say what you want to say. But I think Caden is a young man who, who knew this was going to bring this kind of scrutiny. Right. But at the same time, um, that young man got to do his best for him. Um, I think he would tell you himself, obviously, that he made a mistake and left too early. And uh, he's back and you got a lot of coaches upset about it. But at the same time, you got a lot of coaches that's going to try to take part and gain an advantage doing the same thing. Right. Doing the same thing. When this next transfer portal opens, when this window opens, you're going to see a lot of movement, man. You're going to see a lot of movement. You're going to see kids uh, jump ship. Uh, you're going to see kids go from one roster to the next. And uh, you just got to prepare for it. You just got to prepare for it. Um, I like Lane. It's no secret that I wanted Lane to be our coach at one point in time. That was a that was then. This is now. But I personally think Lane need to mind his business and worry about his roster. Um I like Lane, but, you know, you can't speak your advantage in the SEC, right? You can't speak your advantage. You know what I mean? You got to earn it. He knows that better than anyone. Jim Parker says, Coach, I heard that the coaches at Iowa never contacted him after he arrived on campus. Wow. 
info on the campus and nothing about the football facility. You know what's crazy about that, Jim? I heard something similar to that. I actually read where they didn't like the players didn't really talk to him. Uh, I read some stuff where they didn't include him in any type of videos and like they just pretty much didn't have nothing to do with him. And um, it was said that they didn't want to make it look like they wanted to give give him something. Right. I guess they were trying to send a message, you know, to him. And uh, that's part of the reason why he got up out of there, probably. Um, so it's just a messy situation at the end of the day. Kimberly says, agreed, Sean. That's a mess. When the young man left Alabama early, all facts, Kimberly, all facts. Because in essence, you hurt two fan bases feelings, right? So you acquired enemies on both sides, your home team school and the school that you actually played at. Um, so at the end of the day, all the young man can do is make the best decision for himself and uh, live with it, right? This will make him stronger. He'll be better from this. Um, you know, to know that Iowa, of all people, turned their back on him and, and treated him like that. At the end of the day, you guys did what you had to do to get him back, right? So, you know, I don't understand the 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 hazing of him now. You poached him from Alabama's roster. You talked to him during the season, right? You did all you could do to poach him and to bring him back to your roster. We just called a check on you, see how you were doing. We just called to see how how we were you okay, right? So don't try to be tough now that you got him. See, my what? Just go on, embrace the young man. If you did that, he may be still on your roster. So you can't have it both ways, man. Either you're mad at him and you don't want him, or either you're happy and you keep him. You can't have it both ways. You can't be mad, treat him like you know what, and, and then be mad when he leave your roster. You got to pick a side, man. Right? So. That's just what it is at the end of the day. You know, no hazing, no nothing, right? I'm sure that the veteran players on that team, the Deontay Lawsons, the Tyler Bookers, the Malachi Moores, I'm positively sure that Caden will get enough uh, behind closed doors conversations that it'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. So that's what it is for me with him. You know what I mean? I was just really, really shocked that Lane, of all people, spoke on it like that. Um, I couldn't believe he, he, he took it that, uh, that deep to, to practically throw a shot at Caden, right. Without mentioning Caden's name. Um, I thought that was very, very Lane Kiffin ish. You know what I'm saying? That's how Lane do, you know, we all know that's, that's, that's Lane's forte. Um, but I, I was shocked that, uh, he did that. I was shocked, but I wasn't shocked. We know Lane, we know Lane, we know how he do, um, and that's just what it is with him. I don't know if you guys seen what Coach Nick Sheridan said about our offense, but I thought it was intriguing. I thought it was happy. It made me happy. Um, you know, I love hearing the coaches say good things about the players because it really lets you know that the players are learning. The players are understanding that this is a different offense. And uh, I was happy about that. You know, Coach Sheridan spoke about it. I watched his interview and 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 um, I really gathered some things. Coach Sheridan talk about, talked about how um, the players were getting better and better every day. Um, he talked about how being a young player, especially at the line of scrimmage, especially at the line of scrimmage, right? Um, it's a lot to learn. It's a lot to learn, guys. It's a lot to learn mentally, physically. He said these kids were hardworking. Um, he said Coach Cap is pouring pouring into them, installing, you know, at a, at a, at a massive pace, right? So I was very, very, very happy to hear that. He said competition. He said, that's the number one thing, competition. So when you hear the coach come out talking about competition, that's when you know there's a good thing because that's what Alabama was built on. That's what Alabama was built on, competition. Alabama was not built on giving out positions. Alabama was not built on, on, on grandfathering positions. Alabama was built on competition. You say you better. I think I'm better. Let's fight it out. Let's see who wins at the end of the day and let that be your starter. And um, I was very, very happy to hear that from him. I was very happy to hear that from him. He said, we challenged the group. That means the coaches are demanding. They challenged the players uh, at all positions, at all positions. And um, to seek competition this week and to see it, you know, it made the coaches happy. He, seen, he, he talked about those two guys at center, Parker Brailsford and um, James Brockermeyer, to see those guys competing, you know, and having really, really, really done a nice job 
You know, they're two good players. They're battling. Um, he said, but our center position has played well to this point. So both of those guys have played well. So I'm really, really happy to hear that. You know, after last year, I can't be more ecstatic to hear to um, hear that our center position is playing well. That, way, that means a lot to me, man, because we all know the debacle that happened last year over and over and over again. Um, he talked about the new system and how the players were learning it. Um, he's talked about um, the necessary changes that are coming. He talked about how both of those kids were great. The offense were lying, doing well. And they were really, really, really high on Caleb Odom. Really, really high on Caleb. Talked about how he was a very talented player. Coach Jamarcus Shepard spoke on him. Um, you know, he talked about how Shep was pouring into him and really challenging him and really, really, really getting on him to really bring that out of him. Um, you know, a young skill player with great stamina, great endurance. You know, the volume of running in practice, the effort. He said Caleb was a sponge. He said Caleb was a sponge. You hear a young kid like that being a sponge in these offenses, man, that's very promising. That's very promising. That's a big kid, man. That's a big kid. And to, to hear that that kid soak up the knowledge the way he do, right? Um, they're pleased with him. They're pleased with him. That kid may possibly get on the field quite a bit, right? Um, I really believe that. I really believe that they're primping Caleb Odom to have a great year right now. Um, so this kid has been doing exceptionally well in practice. And that's why I'm so excited about the scrimmage tomorrow. I'm so excited about it. Um, to see these guys communicate their system, the techniques, the fundamentals, and, and to have these guys learn new positions, uh, old positions with new techniques. I guess I'll say it that way. Um, he said you needed uh, all 11 guys to execute at a high level. I couldn't agree more, right? Um, each snap, every snap, there's no one position um, that you can, not on offense, have better than the other. Everybody has to execute on a high level. You can't have 10 guys doing the right thing and one doing the not, doing the wrong thing, right? um he talked about how they poured a lot of install on these guys they really 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 poured a lot on them and uh he talked about the battle for the number two quarterback right i think coach smook spoke about that you know the 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 battle for the starter is not that's not even a um that's not even really a thing anymore right i think the battle for the number two quarterback is where where the battle lies um so that's going to be interesting, man. That's going to be interesting Interesting to see uh, Ty, who we all think is number two, Ty Hayes, battle it out with Austin Mack, battle it out with with, with um, uh, the other young quarterback, you know, number 12, uh, Lonergan, Dylan Lonergan. Lonergan. Um, it's going to be interesting to see those guys battle it out, man. You know, it's going to be really, really interesting. I got my money on Ty, but these kids are putting pressure on Ty. They're putting pressure on Ty. So we got a really, really good quarterback room. Um, and all that competition is going to do, guys, is make each player better. It's just going to make each player better. Austin Mack, Dylan Lonergan, Ty Simpson, and Jalen Miro being the incumbent. Um, new scheme, new installation, a lot of installation. Uh, Sheridan talk about, talked about how he was lucky to be their coach. So you always have hurdles in installing a new system, you know, he talked about how um, he, he, he doesn't really look at it as hurdles, right? I look at it as hurdles. He said he didn't really look at it as hurdles. He just tries to find uh, something to attack and get better, right? He tries to find something to attack and get better at it, right? Um, he says they don't really evaluate it as if they're behind or ahead, right? So I, I, I thought that was interesting. They don't really evaluate it as we're behind this or we're ahead of schedule or this, that, and the third. Uh, we're just where we are. What do you say? We're just where we are and um, trying to be better each day. So I really respected that. I thought it was interesting. Uh, he said they had a certain way that they installed the offense. He said you had to adapt uh, with each group. Uh, every each every year you got to bring these guys along because sometimes your roster changes from year to year obviously as we know with graduation with nfl um you know you want to bring these guys along you want these young guys to learn the system 
And um, so you want these kids to attack it every day. Even if you make a mistake, make it full speed. So I really, really, really respected the things that guy talked about. Then he talked about the competition at offensive tackle, which is something I'm ecstatic to see. I'm, uh, you know, I'm like a kid in the candy store with these offensive tackles. I want to see who starts. I want to see how well they play. Um, I want to see it. I really want to see it. Jim says that coach son Re reality lane wanted him. Yeah, I think so. I think so, Jim. I think some feelings are probably hurt right there, Jim. That's why he went so hard on him, right? Um, if 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 Caden was actually in the portal for a great deal of time, you can best believe Lane would have tried to get him. So you got you got some feelings that's probably hurt, right? Of course. So it is what it is, you know. Um the competition at offensive tackle, man. He talked about that. He said that um they're right his exact words were they're right in the thick of it. That's what he said. He's the, he said those kids are young, they're talented, they're hungry, they're well coached. Um, he said he think Cap is doing a phenomenal job. He's excellent. He's an expert offensive line coach, and we're lucky to have him. He said all the right things, right? He didn't give any um any any he didn't give his hand away at all about uh who, who's leading who's not leading you know he he didn't he didn't give any inside info away to let us believe who would be the starter who's doing well who's falling behind um you know so he talked about the physicality the toughness the effort he talked about how um he thought that all of them recognized the importance of the offensive line in this league in this league um he talked about how we're not where we need to be but those kids are improving um cap has done a great job with those kids and are working their tails off each and every day and um i'm excited about it the coaches are excited about it improvement is on, is right around the corner improvement is right around the corner so I, I can't wait to see these kids um i think a question was posed to him does the helmet communication uh go through Caleb DeBoer too. And he says they're sort of right in the middle of working it out. Um, but everyone should hear what is being communicated to the quarterback. Um, the only extension uh, that is now the quarterback receives, the communication is on the headset. Everyone would be able to hear it. I thought that was interesting, right? So the communication between the quarterback and the coach, everyone would be able to hear it. All the offensive uh, coaches or or, or or people who make the decisions will be able to hear the call i thought that was very interesting i'm not sure it's like that in the nfl but i thought that was interesting um they talked about austin max growth from year one to year two uh, you know he said he's still in year one being a freshman uh he showed up in the summer this is his first real spring practice um he talked about he see him getting better he talked about how austin is getting better uh, the, the arm strength, they embraced coaching, just gave all the kids their flowers. He gave all the kids their flowers, right? He wasn't down on anyone. Um, he talked about how the offensive veterans are helping in the installation. Um, he talked about how anytime you have experience, it's valuable. It's valuable, man. It's valuable to have players that understand this offense. It's valuable to have players that have competed in this offense and understand the finer points of uh, just the fundamentals of doing things the right way in this kind of offense. Uh, there's some familiarity with it, and he talked about it. Um, so I'm proud of that. You know, I, I was really, really ecstatic about the whole interview, right? I wanted to see his body language. I wanted to see how he looked at the camera. And uh, I think he did a great job. He talked about Jaden Roberts, as we all know, right? I call him the Thanos Hulk himself. Uh, talked about him being a great kid. He's a hard worker, strong, extremely. He said, not only is he strong, he's extremely strong. You know what I mean? Um, he talked about how he thinks he's building a foundation he has and making it stronger uh, with the experience he has. A great kid, a joy to coach. Uh, then he said, did I meant, then he came back and followed up with it. Did I mention how strong he was? So that tells you that we, we you know, we got some good things cooking on that offensive line, man. I couldn't be more excited about the offensive line. Um, I'm really, really ecstatic to see these guys under pressure, right? I want to see them face adversity. I want to see how they what happens when they give up a sack. I want to see that's when you can really tell the character of the kid and how he how good he's gonna be. 
I'm not worried about seeing them when everything's going good. I want to I want to see these guys after they give up a sack, after something detrimental happens. Can you come back and follow that up with a great performance? That's what I want to see. That's how I tell how good a kid is going to be. And um, I personally can't wait to see it. I want to know in the chat, undefeated, who, what position group are you guys wanting to see? Everybody type in the chat. What position group are you want to see the most? Do you want to see the quarterbacks, the running backs, the wide receivers, the offensive line, the tight ends, the defensive line, the linebackers, or the secondary, whether that be safeties or corners? What position group are you guys most interested in seeing? Sweet Home Bama 24. What's up with you, bro? Roll Tide, man. Roll Tide to you, Sweet Home. Howdy. Back to you, my friend. Roll Tide, broski. Um, yeah, I want to know what, what position group are you guys interested in seeing? Son, we, what's up, bro? How you feeling, bro? Good to see you, man. Byron Walker. What's up, man? Good to see you. Todd. What's up, man? How you guys doing? JJ. Uh, Mr. B205, hit those like buttons if you can when you guys come in, man. If you will. What's up, B Fan? How you doing, man? Roll tie to you. Uh AAMU for sure, for sure. Greg Coffee. What's up, Greg? How you doing, man? Um, Chris from New Jersey. As I said, let's see. So Chris says wide receiver. Ooh, I feel you, Chris. Let's see. Buck says cornerback. Okay. Goofball says the O-line. Defend. Defense says running backs. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Javian Smith. Javian says running backs as well. Um, that running back has got a lot of people wanting to see that, man. Running backs are popular. Um, yeah, Javian says running backs. Tim Nolan says that old line. Janet says offensive line. Okay, so a lot of offensive lines, a lot of running backs, believe it or not. Man, Mim says secondary. Okay, got us a secondary in there. Deborah Rothschild says O line and wide receiver. Okay, and I guess now that Jalen is hurt, I guess I kind of want to see the wide receivers too. Now, I want to see Kendrick Law, Kobe, uh, uh, Bernard that came from Washington. I want to see who's going to be the alpha, who's going to play X in that. Who's going to play X in that group? Chris from New Jersey says wide receiver first, then DBs. Yeah, getting a lot of DBs. <laughs> Jared's <laughs> the equipment manager. <laughs> Jared, you're crazy, man. And look, Goofball just put it out there. I just want to see us not be trash. Facts, facts. Um, Greg Coffey says we need live chat. And call in no other content channel does that we have both of those Greg. we have live chat undefeated and we have a call-in show we have both they have both Greg. uh clinton howard says the o-line okay john m says the o-line ray parham says defensive backs k spray what's up k spray how you doing man says o-line and dbs ray parham what's up bro how you feeling man so like we got a lot of offensive line and dbs we had a few running backs at first, but I think the offensive line is what most people are looking to see. I see. Goofball says O-line. Patriot Life says O-line. LaQuisha says O-line and sit. Yeah, yeah. Facts, facts. Definitely center. Good night. Definitely center. JJ says Miro. First Miro. Okay. First QB. Marquita, my neighbor, says the secondary. Yeah. They're going to be young, so I definitely want to see those guys as well. OGJ Townsend says the running backs and the takers, takers being those wide receivers. We went from ride outs to takers. I like it. Sean Williams, what's up with you, broski? How you doing, man? Shout out to – I can't even bring myself to say it, Sean, but I'm going to do it because I love you. Shout out to – it pains me deeply. Shout out to Bama State and my brother Sean Williams. Slap my damn self for that, Sean. Shout out to you, broski. You know it's all love, bro, bro. Todd, oh, defend. Sean with the Bama State. That's our brother from, from the other side. You know what I mean? Shout out to my brother, Sean Williams, man. Todd says the DBs. Kimberly, my girl Kimberly says QB and wide receiver. Got a couple of QBs in there. Okay. Um. Jared says locker room pest control. David Williams says 
coaching group. Okay, David. KT says the O-line. And Tim Nolan says, even with them new DBs. Shout out to Mr. B205 with the $5 super chat. Late to the party. But glad I called my dude, Coach Sean. Mr. B205, you already know, brother. Love the 205, man. Much love to you. Thank you for that $5 super chat, Mr. B. It's much appreciated, my friend. Trust me on that, man. Roll tie to you, broski. Hey, you are right, bro. Late, early, it don't matter. Long as you in here, man. Roll tie to you, my brother. Thank you for that as well. Uh, so we got O line. We got we got everybody. Greg says O line and secondary. <laughs> KT said pest control. Oh no, you just hobbit the old boy. Um, Doctor three three four says O line and the secondary. Rich B says the front seven. Really, that's the first. Okay, Rich, that's the first one we got of that one. Front seven, which is going. I think the front seven should be one of the most experienced groups on the team. But I feel you though, Rich. I feel you, man. Megan says the entire offense, the whole offense. Facts. Greg McKinney says the O-line. Without a shadow of a doubt, Greg. That's one of mine too, man. You know, my girl Carla. Carla says the secondary and the O-line. Yeah, the two, the two really most suspect positions, if you ask me. You know, wide receiver, maybe, but definitely the O-line and the secondary. Um, Yaheem, the watchman. What's up, Yaheem? Says the Husky position. Very good. Very good, Yaheem. And you know what's so crazy, you hear? I'm interested in see who's gonna be playing that husky position. Is it Devontae? Is it Malachi? Is it Tony Mitchell? Is it who? Who's playing the husky position? Who's gonna go out there first with the ones at that position? At the husky position. That's a good one. That's a whole fact. Shout out to you, Yaheen. Uh Real Red 100. What's up with you, Broski? How you feeling, man? O-line and wide receiver for sure. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely, <laughs> Patriot Light. Patriot Light said, "The cheerleaders development team. You can never go wrong with the cheerleaders. Trust me." Uh, Chris from New Jersey says, "Any word on Jalen?" Nah, Chris, I hadn't heard nothing, man. Um, as of right now, I, I've been trying to find some kind of knowledge, something to um, you know present to the chat, but I can't find nothing. Everything that I see says that they they don't know either everybody just still and and maybe no news is good news man hopefully um you know like i said just say a prayer for that young man dino says the secondary defense says the running backs and the o-line and then in yeah facts man defense that's me too that's me too man running back i want to see running back defense but i think i want to see running back for a different reason I want to see the offensive line. I want to see running back just because I love justice and I love our running back room. I just want to see them, right? I have a concern about our offensive line. I have a concern about our secondary. Not a grave concern, but just a concern um, by which I don't know who's going to be out there. So that's kind of where I'm going. Not really a concern as if, oh, we're going to suck. But nah, more of I don't know who's going to be out there. So I want to see who's going to be out there. Shout out to you, defense. That's all facts, man. Uh, Greg Coffee says Caleb Odom, all facts. Definitely want to see Caleb Odom, Greg. I agree with you. Uh, Byron, I don't know, Byron. That's what I was saying. We, we we still don't have any info on him. I don't have any info on him. Um, every every source that I have, which is not many, um, they don't know. Nobody knows, nobody's heard anything. They're keeping it very quiet. Um, so I'm just trying to stay positive and and Keep that young man prayed up, you know. Sort of, it sort of um, shook my soul a little bit when they said the ambulance had to come. I was like, "Whoa, man! That, that was that was tough to hear. That was that was extremely tough to hear, man." Sean said, "Put everything on hold, coach. Let me park this truck. <laughs> Roll tide, cut. Come on through, Sean. You know you always got a spot, Broski. You already know, man." Bama fan ninety five says, "Hey, Rab, what's up, Bama fan ninety five? How you doing, man?" Jared says, those guys that strike the field. <laughs> okay. Uh, Greg says, Sean, on all shows, not just Kyle, we need to call in. Oh, yeah, the call in show is great, Greg. I agree. People love the call in show, right? Um, the call in, the only thing about it, we only get an hour, Greg, for these segments. And if you do the call in show, you're probably not going to get a lot of calls in the hour. You know, when Kyle do those call in shows, it's 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 a it's a long show you know because you want to get everybody's call in and um 
you know, and, and do the best you can. Uh, what's up, Justin Summerlin? How you doing, Justin? Hey, man, good to see you, bro. I'm glad you up in here, man. K Sprayer says if the old line is clicking, everything else just fall. Facts. All facts, man. Shout out to Patriot Life. You know, Patriot, Patriot Life is at it again. Shout out to Patriot Life with five Bama football on YouTube uh, with, Kyle, with Kyle Henderson memberships to the channel. Uh, thank you, Patriot Life. You already know, man. It, it goes without saying with you. Um, you are much appreciated. You know, you're one of the leaders in here, man. We appreciate you. Um, trying to keep everybody in green. Appreciate you, man, more than you know. We thank you more than you know, man. Roll Tide to you, Patriot Life. Um, Trap Four Key, Young King says ESPN got Ryan Williams number one in the nation. Ryan's gonna be a, a dog, man. Ryan's gonna be a dog, you know. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take some adjustment, you know, to college football. But that kid is talented as they come. Nicole Covington, hello, Nicole. I'm glad you're in here. I was looking for you. Shout out to you. OG Ephraim is in the house. What's up, OG? How you feeling, Ephraim? I got all these Bama states. Deborah, you Bama state too? See, what, see, Sean, I blame you for this. Sean, you are the culprit of this Bama state uprising that I'm seeing in here. What is going, Sean? See, see, Sean, I blame you for this. I blame you for this, Sean. I got the, look at Deborah talking about some ASU. The peer pressure, man. Sean, you ain't right, bro. You ain't right, man. I got to highlight my boy, D-Fin. D-Fin, this is my sentiment, Sean, respectfully. Shout out to D-Fin. That's an A&M boy right there, Sean. <laughs> Shout out to Bama State, though, man. My bros across, from across the way. My bros and sisters. Shout out to Nicole. Shout out to you for sure, Nicole. You know what I'm saying? Nicole, do you go for Alabama A&M University or Alabama State University? I hope it's Alabama A&M and the maroon and white. The marching maroon and white, that is. Yeah, me too, though, Chris from New Jersey. I'm dying to see Ryan. That kid is going to be absolutely awesome. Um, I think that kid understands he's going to have a big career here. And if I know Coach DeBoer, they're going to target him. They're going to target him. They're going to get that kid the ball. And uh, I can't wait to see him either. I can't wait to see him either, man. I I'm excited as all here, Monica Hill. I'm so glad you're in here. Shout out to Monica. Mm. Glad you're in here, Monica. Roll tied to you. El Lico. What's up, El Lico? Moore is back in the field house this year. Shout out to El Lico. I like that name, El Lico. What's up with you, Broski? Roll tied to you, man. Wait. Yeah, roll tied to you, man, my friend. For sure, for sure. Dwight, what's up, Dwight? What's going on, man? How you feeling? How you doing, man? Hit that like button if you guys can, man. Try to make this video crack. Appreciate y'all, man, for sure. Dwight, what's going on with you, man? How you feeling, bro? John M says, how do you receive these gifts that are given? You know what, John M? I got to be honest with you when I tell you I have not the slightest damn clue, right? I don't even know how those things are, are, are distributed, given. I don't know if it's just random. I have no clue, John. I have no clue, my brother. I don't even know how those things are, 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 man, I don't even know, John. I wish I had an answer for you, man. Kyle, Smoot, maybe they're one of those guys will be able to tell you how they're, how they're, I don't know much about that, um, that fun fan funder stuff, you know what I mean? But I'm thankful. I just know that it helps the channel. I know it helps the channel. I know it helps Kyle and them and it helps the channel. It helps us keep going. Um, it helps the numbers. It helps bring all the the wonderful things we bring the spot it helps everything and so i really appreciate you guys i can tell you that much uh jermaine mims jermaine says i want to see who plays husky coach that's the key in the run game i like red but he's lightweight jermaine you you, you said a mouthful right there bro that's a fact um they say red being practice laying folks out man but i, I told smook when i first saw this kid he's from down smoking them way and I told Coach Smook when I seen this guy, I said, man, who is this kid, Red? This kid will knock your head off, but he little. If you watch his high school film, he was laying folks out, man. He was laying folks out for sure. Now, you got to pace yourself in college, especially when you're not but about a buck 80. You got to pace yourself, right? Um, con concussions are a real thing. And this kid definitely tried to give out concussion. 
he ain't playing when he come up and, and he's physical he's physical but you're going to be able to cover something which he can and uh it's just going to be interesting it's going to be interesting to see who go out there and interesting to see who competes at a high level yeah jim I i'm with you i think running back is probably um that's probably one of my least worries but i just want to see them just because they're special right and look mickey peg had a great comment right here thank you patriot life patriot life said congrats to all the members that's a whole fact patriot life congrats man you already know mickey pate said special teams because football is a game of, a game of field position nobody's talked about special teams yet shout out to mickey pate not even coach son shout out to mickey pate that's a whole fact mickey we hadn't even talked about because because the great will record is gone will is gone guys who is gonna kick right now is it connor talty is it one of the other young kids the, the the local kids who's gonna punt we know james burnup we know james is, is entrenched who's our next punter like just just in case nicole roll tied to you roll tied to you nicole shout out to you i'm appreciative of you that's a whole fact dino anybody in greenville south carolina uh bama 95 what's up with you broski how you feeling um kimberly says she wants the center to do his part and don't mess up and get bad snap yeah I, and from what i'm hearing they hadn't been it hadn't been any really hadn't been any bad snaps kimberly so let's let's hope and and pray that that continues right um and i'm i'm i'm, I'm sure it will i'm sure it will i'm positive on that center position uh coach spoke about it so i think we're in good hands in that center position appreciate you justin appreciate you man you already know man what's up steven how you doing bro i ain't see you earlier brandon mcclure how are you man roll tied to brandon roll tied to the brother steven shout out to steven man roll tied man man thank you patriot life i appreciate you right back man that's a whole fact facts janet you know that computer helps out a lot better than that you know trying to fiddle with the thumbs you know what i mean much love to janet much love to carla sweet home bama says coach Sean, i'm praying but for, for praying for hell injury hey praying that hell's injury is not serious when the portal opens back up do you think the board picks up a receiver or bama rolls with who they have you know what that's actually a good question because i talked to uh um, coach jm coach jake miro last night and i told coach jm this i said i think the spring will dictate what we do in the, in the transfer portal i think this spring uh the, 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 the scrimmages the a day i think all these things will dictate what we do in the transfer portal i do believe that I think if these corners come out and play exceptionally well, they may or may not go get another corner, right? So I think the spring, uh, Sweet Home Alabama, will really dictate what we do in the transfer portal. That's a whole fact. That's a whole fact. Um, that is an entire fact. Shout out to Auntie Janet, Janet Forsyth. Thank you so much, Janet. Says, Coach Sean, because I can't give memberships from my iPad. Let me do what I can do. Roll tie, fam. Janet, roll tie back to you. You already know you're one of the leaders in here as well. You appreciate it. Um, the staff and I all appreciate you. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate everything you do for the channel. Um, that's why we, we sweet on you guys, man. We thank you. You know, more than you know. More than you, trust me, more than you know. Um, very, very, very th appreciative and thank you. Thank you, Janet. Roll tie to you and your family. That's a whole fact. That's a whole fact. Shout out to Jag, ATL Jag in the house. Mm, what's up, Jag? How you doing? Javion says protect the quarterback. All facts. So that old line got to be right, right, Javion? It's got to be right, man. Schoolie, what's up, Schoolie? Roll tide, bro. Roll tide to you, broski. Good to see you up in the house, man. Doctor Three Three Four always doing it big. Easy there, killer. Says seriously worried about the defensive scheme hope i'm wrong yeah i think i think we're gonna be fine on that side easy to kill her you know i had my doubts at first because i told you i'm a three four guy and I'm, i and the scheme that they run really is not that different it's really not to be honest nickel to be honest right but i was strictly speaking from a basic personnel standpoint 
right? Uh, let me give you an example. I was strictly speaking on, let's just take Keon Keeley, right? Keon Keeley wanted to stand up and play outside linebacker. That's what he came to down before. That's why he didn't go to Ohio State, what his dad said. Now, we don't want Keon in the middle of the field trying to defend nobody, trying to drop back and cover nobody. But we do want Keon Keeley rushing from that outside. In this defense, I think Keon is probably going to play bandit, and they're trying to primp him to get him ready. Uh, obviously, the pad responsibilities are slightly different from playing linebacker than D-line, than an actual real hand-in-the-dirt D-in. Uh, close quarters combat as opposed to space combat, right? Hand movement, a lot of hand. Some of the hand movements are the same, but you're talking about close quarters combat as opposed to a rush end. Um, but this this scheme is gonna be fine, man. It's gonna be fine because Alabama played a lot of nickel anyway, right? We really played a lot of even front in certain situations anyway, right? So I think they'll be fine. You know, I think they'll be fine. Easy, the easy, their killer. I really do. I think it won't be that much of a difference. Um, if 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 you want to have a concern, any concern, Coach Womack has really taken my concerns away of how he calls defense. The scheme really wasn't what I was worried about. It's the play calling what I was worried about. It, it, it's 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 how do you do do you play down in distance? How do you you know how do you play certain diverse offenses? And um, I think Coach Kane Womack has really put my concerns to bed. Um, I think these guys are going to be absolutely good. I do. I don't think a lot will change on defense. I think they may possibly even be better. And, um, you know, it'll give some of these guys an opportunity to really show their skills. I did a segment on uh, John Marin Lathan uh, and Easy Their Killer. He said that um, he liked the scheme better because now he don't have the two gap. He don't have to to you know he can actually show the tools that made him be recruited by Alabama so stuff like that sort of took my worries away and uh I think they'll be just fine I think they'll be just fine OGJ Townsend gifted mm, 10 Bama football on YouTube with Cal Henderson memberships thank you OGJ as usual another leader in the chat Thank you guys, man. You, Patriot Life, Janet, all y'all, all y'all do an awesome job. OGF from everybody, Carla, you know, everybody, man. Kimberly, you know, all these, all, they do all with all of them, man. LaQuasia, you know, everybody, everybody do such a great job. Um, you guys help the channel out more than you know. We appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I can speak for Kyle and the staff when I say thank you. Um, you know, you 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 guys, all of you, all the undefeated is greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. That's why Kyle and T are constantly out doing things uh, to make the channel pop, to make the channel even bigger, better, uh, trying to cover things and try to bring content that a lot of people don't have. Um, it's a lot of people that uh, come up to me talking about this channel. You know, I never thought I would be that guy to have people coming up to me talking about this channel. Uh, it's sort of uncomfortable in a way. But I always speak highly of the channel. I always speak highly of the undefeated because to me, you guys will make the channel. Um, you guys are, are, are what make the channel different than everybody else's, right? The constant, continuous people that come in here and, and tap in and support the channel and, and our, our, our family to this channel, you know, and people see that. People see that. That's a whole fact. Thank you, guys. Thank all of you. I appreciate you, Jay. Appreciate, I appreciate all the undefeated. That's a whole fact, man. You guys are awesome. Roll tired to you all. Um, <laughs> hey, tap me in for that. Tap me in for that. If y'all having that, KT, I want to be there. Get your butt nowhere. I want to see everybody there. Everybody hands on the flow. Hands on up. Uh, What's good, man? Man, chilling, man. Chilling. Cool. Yeah, bro. Just tell Hold me. On, go back to KT comment. Let me see. Let me what's, where it went. Where it went. Right there. Mm -hmm. I'm about to put you on blast, KT. Hold on. 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 Where'd she go? Where'd she go? I can't find it, man. I can't find it. Oh, we need a twerking emoji. Brian, you want a twerking emoji, brother? 
<laughs> I hope the hell not. Don't want to see that. But <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Marquee, That's good, bro. Another leader in here, man. We all up in here, man. They tapped in, man. Tapped in, and we just talking football, man. We was talking about the um. There you go, Defin. Let me post this for my boy Defin real quick. Justin Sumlin in the building. What's good, man? Yeah, Justin Sumlin been up in here, bro. Yeah, man. Shout out to Justin. Where you been bro. at, my boy? You need to stay yeah. on the light. You stay. You need to stay on the good side. You stop going mm. to the dark side. Stay on the dark side. Uh, mm. Defin. You know what it is, bro, bro. Oh, hold on, Nicole. I asked Nicole a question. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much. I knew I liked you, Nicole. I mm. knew. Go home. Roll time. See, Coach Mook done had a few or something. Something wrong with Coach Mook, man. <laughs> Trapanil, what's up, man? I ain't see you, man. Trapanil, what's up, bro? Home team right there. What's up, bro? Where you been, bro? How you feeling, man? Good you up in the house, cuz. Thank you. Good, good, good to see you for sure. Straight up, man. So, yeah, man. I, I, I'm excited, guys. I'm excited about this 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 scrimmage. It'll, it'll you know, one scrimmage, PJ Stans. What's up with you, man? How you doing, bro? You know what I'm saying? Moon Rocker. You know what I mean? All the brothers in here, man. Dean Holly, what's up with you, man? How you feeling? How you doing? Um, you know, one scrimmage is not gonna tell you everything you want to know, but at the same time, you want to amp the competition up. Mike G, B B W H, you already know. You want to amp the competition up, man. You want to amp it up. Let's 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 see what happens when you, when you turn this thing up a couple of volumes. You know what I mean? And uh, I personally can't wait. Are y'all going out there, Coach Smooth? Uh, for the scrimmage. Yeah, uh, hell's yes. Yeah, good stuff, man. But the thing is, we don't we don't get to do any uh like recording, and I think we act, we'll be able to. uh Certain people have access. I'm gonna try to use my God favor shield and get up in there. You know. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, I don't think y'all understand. Like, it don't uh, it don't uh, it's not necessarily that I be like looking for stuff. I just be out there for real, man. And it's always like somebody will recognize me or an interaction I had with, you know, one of the current administrative members or something, you know, conversation, just trying to learn the, the playing field. And uh, yeah, man, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a good thing when you just, you got good camaraderie or a good rapport with a lot of people, you know, in the industry that you work with. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to establish. Uh, Kai has done a good job kind of uh, setting it up for me. And it's kind of like I, I'm naturally a networking type person. I don't like I, everybody see my lives outside with Coach Smooth. I don't I don't meet strangers. So uh, it could be the janitor. It could be the 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 athletic director. I'm gonna I'm gonna acknowledge them and try to carry conversations just as you know one in the same. So let me ask you something, Coach Smooth, because they've been asking about this, and I told them I didn't really have anything on it. Do you have any information on Jalen Hill? Uh. No, uh, the last I heard, and like I said, none of it is confirmed. Um, there was a, a fracture in one of the major uh bones, so it's either the femur or the what's the other one? What's the tibula? Tibula, it, yeah, yeah. Fib fibula, I think. Or is that any fibula? That's your, on, no, that's, your thigh, that's your thigh, that's your thigh. Fibula. The thigh, the, 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 the thigh is the uh fibula, right? Yeah, so the femur is the lower part, right? Yeah that's what they're saying and that's what i was hearing like yesterday there was a fracture in the femur Damn. hairline on, black y'all let me know black. i ain't know uh i ain't no doctor i know about them ligaments where they located but i mm -hmm. don't know about the bone names and stuff i i don't know how many times i had to retake that doggone exam yeah in fourth grade right. i took it twice Okay, okay, Jan Janet, Janet straighten us out right there. Maybe the smaller bone in the lower leg. Okay, yeah, so that's okay. that's the one he has a fracture in. And if you all know, and I didn't know the name of it, but I know how the healing process is, that could take anywhere from, it could be as early as six weeks, but it could also be as long as six months. So you don't know, man. It's just kind of like a play by ear. And it, I think at, at some point, like the fracture itself heals between that three and five week time period. It's about the tolerance of pain and seeing how the callus over and all that stuff. So, yeah. you know, you can't go in and operate on a fracture. You only could brace it, you know, and yeah. Need that calcium, boy. You need them them calcium. You need that to make them bones hard, man. These kids mm -hmm. got away from drinking milk. You need that, need that and milk. And I'm on real milk, man. 
Ain't no more. Yeah, no, that is true though. That is true. That ain't no more real milk like back in the day. That's Man, true. You remember when you used to have to shake the milk glass yeah. up and watch <laughs> all this, bro? Yep. Yeah, that is true though. Ain't no more real milk. I will agree with that a thousand percent. <laughs> Hey Greg, I ain't no doctor, man. I just when I told my ACLs, man, I paid attention in those op, not the operation rooms, but mm -hmm. physical therapy. I paid attention to a lot of the ligament, muscle groups, all that stuff. That's what actually got me into wanting to do physical therapy and personal training. Yeah. Yeah. That's me too, man. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Chaz, this is the first. This ain't the first time I've seen that, but it is crazy, right? But that's the thing. He had an uh, ain't nothing happened the day he showed up. This happened Saturday. Yeah. This was this. I mean, the, he showed up Saturday for that practice. He wasn't even near uh, campus. That I, I think he need to come back, man. I really do. I, I would like Scott Cochran, Scott Cochran to be back as yeah, like a motivator, bro. I don't care what y'all say. He I mean, was I, the injury guy. No, that dude know how to get folks up to run through walls, man. Whole <laughs> fact. It's a whole fact, man. Yeah, here we go. Oh, oh, yeah. oh let's go. Oh, oh, oh. I used to love that, John. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that dude, man. He he was great, man. That dude ain't so, never had no voice. <laughs> so listen, Coach Mook, um, I'm going to go help this little one on this crazy math I was just telling everybody earlier, man. She kind of struggling in there. You mean and, she going to uh, help you? Man, I'm trying my best, man. It's sort of, it's very easy, but it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. I, like I, I'm, I'm sitting here at T. I'm like, they really got y'all breaking it down like this, one Son. problem, the whole page. I'm like, what? Son. what? It's crazy. What my daughter is a third grader, right? Mm -hmm. And that whole box method, yeah, yeah, that thing is nobody's doing that what sense does that make yeah it don't like, bro listen I, i'm i wait till she get on up in grades and they started using the mixing it with the algebra and all this kind of crazy stuff man it, hold it, on one second let me close this door real quick go ahead bro go ahead so yeah guys gotta go get the homework on at night with my baby and i uh, know she didn't get home till late because she's a cheerleader so they practice to six she come home take a shower eat now it's time to do homework then it's time to get into bed you know what i'm saying um for her anyway um, you know, she have a long day, go to school all day, uh, you know, get your lesson. And then she go to Chile and practice to six. Then she come home, shower, eat, homework. Man, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Jeremy Sanders, what's up with you, bro? Yeah, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see this. This scrimmage to me is what it's all about to me. The scrimmage, the high level training, the, the going against your teammate and, and putting in the work. To me, that's what it's all about, you know. The fundamental training and you know, one scrimmage don't make a season you know let's not get too over excited but you do want to see him crank the volume up let's crank this thing up you know let's really really crank it up let's 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 see can you get off blocks let's see can you 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 whip your man in front of you let's cr let's crank this thing up a little bit and let's see what's what let's go at malachi let's throw at him and let's see what he about let's go at Devontae. let's go at the freshman go at him don't jalen go at him and let's see what happened let's put them in positions where they got to perform and let's see what happens. Brian Russell, you 100%, bro. I remember waking up, sneaking in the kitchen middle of the night back in like the late 90s. Yeah. Early, early 2000s before uh, factory um, production came, became heavy with milk and artificial milk. I remember going to get a cold glass of milk, bro. And that was like the most thirst quenching glass of milk ever. That, that glass of milk at like two o'clock in the morning when you wake up. And you got the ceiling fan on, but it's still hot. And you had your mouth open while you were asleep. And now your throat dry. So you need some. That milk puts you on point. Or if you couldn't sleep, a warm, you know, warm, warm cup of milk. But check it out though. Skim milk, low fat milk, five percent, three percent, two percent, two percent. Like, bro, what you know what I'm saying? That is crazy, bro. And we just we just accept it. We just accept it <laughs> exactly we just accept it right and see I, I got a weird palate as it is i'm one of them kind when my orange juice i could never get the orange juice with the pulp because it made me feel like i had to back by the gag i ain't like pulp man i feel like something was in the damn juice i was mm -hmm. drinking i ain't like it i ain't like it yeah i didn't <laughs> like that pulp, bro. bro they ain't like that pulp where you drank got this you know you really don't need pieces of stuff in my in, in my liquids no it's no. not cool, bro. No, it's not cool, bro. Pulp mm -hmm. is not for me, man. 
So listen, exactly. undefeated. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to my brother, Coach Move. Run it up for him as you always do. I appreciate you guys as usual. Tapping in. Antoine Covington, you know what I mean? You already know how we feel about you, Carla. All the homies in here, all the beautiful ladies in here, all the brothers and sisters in here. Much love to y'all, man. Shout out to all the coaches, Kyle T, everybody. Roll Tide to y'all, and um, I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Good Lord willing, man. Appreciate you, Coach Moot. For sure, bro. Much love, man. Roll Tide, bro, bro. Roll Tide, man. Y'all know what time it is, man. Y'all go ahead and run it up. Hey, appreciate y'all for hanging out. Your boy was battling, man. These allergies, I ain't felt I ain't felt like this in a while. But I'm, I'm here, man. I'm a trooper. I went and got some special juice. You know what I'm saying? It's good. You know what I'm saying? So we good. We're going to be straight. I'm, I'm hydrating. I'm, I'm doing everything I need to do. I sound a little bit clear, right? A little bit clear. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get right. Chris from New Jersey, what's up, man? What's good? Uncle Jay, what's good? Everybody turning up in the chat for your boy. Y'all already know we're going to do the. We're going to run it up. We're going to run it up. We're going to run it up. This is this is what we do, man. We come in here, we run this thing up. I acknowledge you, Coach Sean. Acknowledge you. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do. It feel good. I want to feel good to be acknowledged. Laquisha in the chat, Goofball in the chat. Let's go, Marquita in the chat. Let's go, Kimberly in the chat. Chris from New Jersey, Steven in the chat, Cynthia, my sister Carla, Greg. What's good? Who is going to be talk of the? Who is going to be talk of the first scrimmage? Ooh, I'm gonna start that one. We're gonna come back to that one. Got a lot of we got another Wednesday full of chat talk tonight. I actually I do have some topics and I'm gonna bring them over. I think it kind of give us a little guidance tonight, right? Make sure I got this mouse working right. Run them thumbs up too, man. We we we're looking kind of low, man. We're looking kind of low. What's good, John M? How you feeling, man? How you feeling, Tim Nolan? How you feeling? What's good, Devin? Sean, what's up, Cuzzo? <laughs> yeah, that's that piling down here is different, bro. Wendy, how you feeling, fam? How you feeling, Wendy Six? How you feeling? Clinton Howard, how you feeling, my boy? Let's go. Lions Pride in the chat. What's good? <laughs> hey, Lions Pride, was you in here earlier when I was doing my my Tiger Palace little demonstration? <laughs> my my hunting pack demonstration. Hey, Spray, what's good, fam? Nicole, how you doing, sugar? Am I sugar right now, Nicole? Deborah, another sugar in the chat. What's up, Antoine? Quay, don't holler at <laughs> Quay, don't holler no more. <laughs> Mike G, what's good, man? Monica, y'all feeling good tonight, man? I'm glad to see y'all energy is up tonight. Thank y'all. Y'all make it easy to come in here and do what we do. Mary Sanders, how you feeling? How are you feeling, sugar? Look, all the ladies is sugar tonight. Everybody, all the ladies is sugar tonight. KT, that my sugar right there. That my sugar. Me and KT here. Me and KT here. That's that's my KT. I just want the chat to know, Auntie Janet, KT, Carla, Quasha, Marquita. Who else? I'm missing somebody. Don't beat me up. Somebody gonna beat me up. Somebody gonna beat me up. Cynthia. Who else? I'm missing somebody. I'm gonna get beat up. I shouldn't even did this. I put myself in the spot. Those are my those are my sugars right there. And I'm adding more to the sugar circle. But these are my sugars, y'all. Auntie Janet, KT, Quasha, Marquita, Carla, Cynthia. They're my sugars right there. So when they come in, I have to give them they special love. You know what I'm saying? They're my sugars. And then everybody else, man. Y'all know I love y'all, man. But we gotta take care of our ladies, man. We gotta take care of our ladies. What Quay at? Oh, that Quay Quay. That Quay Quay in the chat. You talking about Quasha? Quay Quay. Marquita, all y'all, man. Y'all know, hey, listen, I'm gonna act up, man. I don't care. I was feeling like y'all an hour ago. I was done. I was done, man. I ask KT. Ask KT, I was done, y'all, but I, I refuse. I refuse to miss out on the opportunity to interact with y'all, man. Hey, I, I, I refuse to miss out on the opportunity to act, interact with y'all. I forgot it's eight o'clock, too, y'all. I got y'all know I got to bring it down around this time, so. Appreciate y'all for showing love. Uh, let's run this commercial one more time. Let's pay some bills. And then we're going to get into it, man. We're going to jump into the topics. I got a few topics lined up for tonight. We're going to push this segment for another hour, right? We're going to push this thing for at least an hour. And then we're going to get into what we do, man. All right? We're going to get into what we do. 
Here goes the commercial. Y'all enjoy this commercial. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special Bambo football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com. Use the promo code Bambo. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is Bama. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's $0.10 a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right if you want to go through the different levels. We have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama Football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama Football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all for supporting us, man. And as y'all can see, we got a little few topics for tonight. We're going to jump into it. Um, and let's 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 have a good time tonight, y'all. I'm, I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling the love. Kill Tech 9, how you feeling? Welcome back to the family, bro. Much love. Hey, Kill Tech 9, I believe how excited I am. I believe how excited I am for the spring game. Can't wait to see the new era. Listen, appreciate the $20 super chat. And I think you share a sentiment that this whole group, this whole chat shares. And this is probably one of the most highly anticipated um, spring games since possibly the tour Jalen. Y'all want to think, y'all, when y'all think like the tour Jalen spring game was probably the most anticipated, probably the last highest anticipated. Um, we kind of knew who the starting quarterback was uh COVID, right because we didn't get to have a spring mac jones was the next man up uh bryce young we knew that he was going to be a starter for at least two years right so now we're, we're going uh post post bryce we uh saw the competition between Jalen and, and ty last year it wasn't as hype a lot of questions but now we got a whole new coaching staff a whole new administration so that's bringing a lot of um uh it's bringing a lot of hype to what's going on with the University of Alabama and this football program. But one thing I want to jump into tonight, appreciate the $20 super chat and appreciate all the super chats. I see Auntie Janet had a $49.99 super chat uh, here, gave Coach Sean some love. I ain't gonna lie, I'm jealous. I'm not lying, I'm, I'm just playing. I, I ain't jealous, I'm happy. Appreciate the $49.99, Auntie, much love always. Listen, so let's jump into it. What's the vision? What's the vision going into this season? What are we looking for? What is the coaching staff at the University of Alabama looking for? What's happening at the at the University of Alabama that's causing the vision to be established, right? Um, first thing we kind of look at is is recruiting off rip. You look at how we're we're killing it and recruiting, and you kind of just you you, you kind of feel so confident that the future is looking very bright. I mean, uh, let me fix this graphic real quick because it is cut off a little bit. But yeah. Um, you look at the vision of this team and coach coach Kalen DeBoer, he quickly established the vision um when he talked about how he planned to commit um to to getting into the culture and learning what matters to the university not just the players but the university as a whole um he integrated himself with all the other athletic departments he started talking to the baseball coach the basketball coach I mean, uh, the the powers to be, the the A Alabama alumnus, uh, the the alumni, the 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 boosters, everybody. He started started gauging the room, uh, so to say, to see, um, to see. Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm trying to type and talk to y'all at the same time. To see what 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 the vision should be. You know, he came in with an idea, a direction. Um, but he tweaked it to make it fit to what this organization needed, to what this program needed. And he was able to maintain a solid roster. As many hits as we took as far as players leaving. Um, not a lot of 
experience left, but a lot of possible, you know, we had some high hopes for a lot of those guys that left. Earl Little, uh, Amari Knee Black, uh, who else? Antonio Kite was a guy that I was excited to see. Caleb Downs was a guy that I was excited to see. So when those guys left, those kind of hurt, right? We, especially on the defensive side. But um, he was able to go out and secure a 2024 class, keep a lot of those guys, three five stars in the secondary. Um, he was able to secure and solidify them. He was able to re uh, get Ryan Williams to recommit. So we saw him hit it early in recruiting. You see what he's doing with this 2025 class. Let's look at the 2024 class first. Um, for guys that stuck around it and came through the process. You look at Jalen Mbakwe, Xavier Brown, Xavier Mincy, Caleb Odom, highly touted four-star, highly touted four-star Jeremiah Beeman, highly touted four-star Daniel Hill, Casey Poe, highly touted four-star, Jay Sean Ross, four-star, um, Rodarius Morgan, four-star. Uh, did we Were we able to keep Grimsley? I think we lost Grimsley, right? If I'm not mistaken. I think we lost Grimsley. We lost Grimsley, right? Sterling Dixon uh, retained him. Bubba Hampton retained him. William Sanders, who's actually, actually has been making a little noise as far as getting in a rotation at, and, and being the second guy in that guard rotation, right? Um, Joseph Okoronko, uh, linebacker out of Germany. That kid is an athlete. He's put on about 15, 20 pounds in his two and a half months or this two months of being here. Asaya Fager out of Central Phoenix City secured that highly touted three star. Joseph Iannota, you look at him, you wonder why he's a three star. Maybe it's the small league he played in, but this kid is making moves on the field, pushing to make you know for for some some quality rotational depth. You know, Kaden Jones, another guy I think is going to surprise some people. Very athletic, very quick. Drake Kirkpatrick Jr. to round it out as far as early enrollees and signees. You got guys like Ryan Williams and Noah Carter, Kevin Riley, Amari Jefferson, Rico Scott, Stephen Duma, Jay Lindsey, Quentin Reese. All of these guys will be pulling up in the fall. And that is just a solid class to round out to be the number two class. So his vision was secure the recruiting, secure the trail, secure it. And then he went out in the 2025 class, right? He went out and he's out there offering guys. He's getting early commits. I mean, I, and y'all know one of my favorites, Daryl Johnson, you know, probably the highest rated four star in this class right now. He went out and got him. Then you turn around a few weeks later, you get Luke Metz, somebody we personally have on this show, a guy that I'm excited about. A lot of people have him rated as a three star. I reported him as a four star. Get mad at me. Rivals did it. So I did it too. I was able to validate it. The boy is, is solid, a solid four star. And the thing is, what three star you know got 33 D1 offers? What three star you know got 33 D1 offers? So for all the naysayers and the haters that's been coming at my boy Luke, keep it quiet. That, that that's my young boy. So if y'all coming at Luke, y'all coming for me. And I got hands. I'm gonna just let you know I got hands. Guy copy Coach Mo. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I got it. Coach Smoot. You see the Tennessee guy copy Coach Mo? I didn't. I didn't, but but I want y'all to know something. We are behind, we are um we are behind the power curve when it comes to getting engaged with social media. We're we're late, we're behind. So us doing it now is not nothing new to college football, it's just new to Alabama fans. So I want y'all to be want y'all to be be real about that. Get what I'm saying? I want y'all to be real on that. <laughs> hey Sean Williams, I was a five-star recruit on NCAA too, man. Road to glory, I was a five-star. Had to work that, had to work that. <laughs> But you, you look at a 25 class, man, and you got guys, you got Daryl Johnson, you got Derek Smith, another guy that was sneaky, you know, very quiet about his his process, his journey, his his recruitment. Anthony Rogers, uh, Turbo. I'm really excited about Turbo. Um, I can't wait to see Turbo like develop, man. He's a smaller guy, scat back type look, but he's so fast. It's the reason why they call this young man Turbo. He is fast as they come. Antonio Coleman, Mr. Flip. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we can keep him locked down. I think we do. I think he understands the role he has, the opportunity he has being the uh, next big defense alignment to come through. I think he'll be the one that kind of takes on the, the 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 Tim Keenan role of this of this class, of this next era, right? Of this first class of uh, of Coach DeBoer. Look at Miles Johnson out of T.R. Miller and Brute in Alabama. Those guys always putting out some dogs. He's a four star. Zamir Smith, another guy, athlete. I think he can play wide receiver or cornerback. Um, 
put them on the field. That's what I say. Uh, Abdul Sanders, another commit we just got this past week. Linebacker. Our linebacker group in this class right now, the targets that we're going after is crazy athletic. A lot of rangy guys, a lot of guys that can get out of space and cover, a lot of guys that you can put on the edge and push to his quarterback. You got Luke Metz. You can play him at Mike Orstein. IQ on 1,000. I'm excited about this, this class. And so Kaylin DeBoer has the vision. Start saying recruiting. Then culture. Let's look at the culture. Y'all see the energy. Y'all see the clips. Y'all see everything that's being posted. The culture has taken a change for the better. Not, not, not to go away from what Coach Saban did. Excellency is still the standard. But the culture has definitely changed for the better. And I say that to say this because kids aren't trying to come to a school where everything is military, locked in all day. You get what I'm saying? Kids want to come to a school that where they could basically they could have fun, man. They could have fun sometimes at practice. They could be coaches can they can relate to them. You get what I'm saying? So it's not a bad thing to be where we are uh with this staff with how things have transitioned shout out to the 209 in the chat too make sure y'all running these likes up i appreciate y'all for hanging out with your boy listen we pushing through a little bug right now you know this this pollen trying to take your boy out but we ain't tripping we ain't tripping we here it's gonna take a little bit more than some some little punk pollen to uh to get me off my rockers you get what i'm saying so i, I appreciate y'all for hanging out Definitely run the likes up, but share it up, too. We want people to come in and join the conversation because our reality versus reach segment, our, our topic for reality versus reach. I'm coming to y'all for some reality versus reach. And we're going to put it in chat. We're going to we're going to do about three or four. We're going to pull it out and we're going to have some fun tonight. Um, But back to the vision, back to the vision. I appreciate y'all. Um, Yeah. Welcome back to the South. You're right, sis. This piling down here is something different. Something different, baby. I'm telling you. Um, But yeah. Uh, you look at the vision, the culture, you see the culture change. He's not trying to force anything. I feel like this is so natural. And I'm only saying this because I get to interact with the staff. I get to interact with the players. I get to interact with the media. And the the the, the message from the media coverage is this ain't nothing like what Saban would do, you know. Um, but then, you know, you get in there, you start asking questions. And it's like, man, they, I can't say that, but they like the new energy. They like the new media energy. They don't. They don't too much care for the old squad, old style. They don't care to do all these political statements and stuff. Straightforward stuff we can relate to as fans and as supporters of the team, right? So you look at the culture. The vision for the culture is to continue to advance, to maintain with the times, not be, not be, uh, not be swayed or. Uh, manipulated by society or let you know we're not letting young guys come in and tell us we want sixty thousand dollars to play for you know we want quality guys we want guys that's committed to the program and committed to the brand right committed to creating value through alabama right uh i don't think he ever came back y'all i don't think he ever came back train wreck i think we we cooked them very nicely done and um he's probably somewhere um thinking second you know, having a second or third thought about coming in here again, especially when Coach Mook on the screen, because I'm going to let y'all go loose. I'm going to let y'all go crazy. I'm going to ask y'all to go crazy. I'm let y'all, like I control y'all. Y'all, I love when y'all go crazy. <laughs> hey, Cynthia, appreciate that. Cynthia, I was just giving you a shout out too. I ain't going to tell y'all what's in there, but just know it's an old school remedy. And yes, it's working. It is working. Culture the same, just different way of doing it. Better vibe for the kids today. I I, I say I, I have to disagree, Greg. Culture is not the same. Culture is different. It used to be very quiet, very direct, very straightforward and business-like around here. No, there's a different joy, a different energy, a different get a hop about your step. I mean, everybody, even the SID Josh Maxson is adjusting to how he allows access for the media where we're doing the, the interviews at i mean they're trying so many different new things so the culture has changed it is different not necessarily it, it's evaded the old way it's building on so that entails change not a bad thing difference of opinion right here difference of uh not necessarily opinion but wording wording and, and how we grasp it but there's definitely a change man definitely a change it's different it's different. It's not the same from when Coach Saban, even how they do interviews. You can actually hear the coaches talking. You know, one of the main things that every media member talked about was Coach Saban was Coach Saban. You couldn't hear him during the interviews. He would talk so low. 
you know, and it is what it is. But now all these coaches got energy when they get behind the, the, the podium or when they get in front of the mic. Yeah, man. <laughs> Smooth. Got that good drink. I, I, man, listen, it's an old school remedy, man. You know, it, it helps. It helps. It gets all the sinuses cleared out, lets you open your pores up a little bit. Got some, got some of that in there. You know what I'm saying? No, I do need some honey, though. I do need some honey, though, from my Auntie Janice. She said she's going to hook a boy up. So, yeah. Rum, peppermint, lemon, honey. See, we ain't got no rum. We got some peppermint mixed in there. And a little bit of lemon. I don't have no honey, but it's some it's some peppermint and some honey in there. I went and got some peppermint. It definitely opened up these airways on top of the extra juice. You know what I'm saying? The extra juice we had. Hey, Greg. See? And I think I agree with you to a certain extent. You get what I'm saying? It's just you, you can't say it's the same culture. Coach Saban was he was very militant about how he ran the ship. And everybody knows it. And it was good. It worked for when it worked, you know. Um a lot of the older Bama fans who had, you know, took to that and that's what they know, they don't take to this new style just of yet. They're going to have to see some winning done before they be like, ah, oh, this is the way. So me, I know this is the way you get kids coming to practice that want to be at practice. It's hard to it's hard to lose with a team like that. Talented kids that want to be at practice and want to learn because they got uh, 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 when they mess up, they. they I can almost hold it all day, all day, all day. They got that in their background. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know none of the words to these songs, but I know them beats be fire. You get what I'm saying? And they know the words. So, yeah. <laughs> Fluke said, who is next to commit? Man, it's about four or five that I could possibly put my, my hand on and say, man, they might commit. They might not. Um, As far as the ones to come in the coming weeks, I'm going to tell you like this, man. And this is only my speculation. This is this isn't confirmed because, like I said, my work usually gets done on uh, on Thursdays and Fridays is when I start really uncovering some things. And the fact that we got the likes of Juju Lewis coming this weekend. Um, and I'm going to pull that list back up. I'm going to pull that list back up real quick. Let me look at this list, because I think we might have one or two off of this this list that might give us a verbal. I, I wonder what Derek Meadows is going to do. He's a wide receiver in this 25 class. Um, I wonder what he's going to do with making this visit here. Um, does he commit? Not sure. I think we might get a commitment from a tight end this weekend or, or next week. Maybe next week we might get a commitment from tight end. Um, it's either going to be Braum or Kerr. You know, if, the, if not both. You know what I'm saying? I'm more so strong about um, Lincoln Cure. Um, they both are one of the same skill set wise, but I think we might get a commitment from one of them in the next two weeks, right? Um, also, uh, a name that I think everybody in the chat will be excited about that I'm really excited about is Marcus Harris, modern day wide receiver, usually plays the slot. I think this young man, there might be some serious buzz about him coming to Bama, and and it's a it's it's hot like. It's heating up. This is a, a highly touted four star. We know that Texas is after him. We know that Tennessee is after him. We know that Oregon is after him, right? But I think I like our chances right now. USC is trying to creep up in there, but this is a young man that feels like he has an opportunity to really impact the locker room and the you know the game on the field early in in his career. Um, if he was to commit, I could see him. You know, being being that six foot one eighty five true freshman that that can come in and be used because Kendrick Law, Kobe Prentice, um, oh man, Cole Adams, like all those guys might be out the door next year, and there's nothing wrong with that. All those older guys might be out the door, um, but this talented room of wide receivers, the new era of wide receivers, will get their opportunity in twenty twenty six. I guarantee you, Kayla Odom being a leader. Ryan Williams being a leader, Amari Jefferson, Rico Scott, um, Bubba Hampton, those guys will be leaders in that wide receiver room. So I think guys like Marcus Harris will look at this opportunity to start being implemented early. Mayshawn Montgomery is another guy that I feel like we have a good chance with. Um, you're looking at Florida, they're probably the front runners with that young man, but I like our chances. You look at the Florida quarterback situation, you look at uh, DJ Lagway coming in, right? He might like that. It might be lucrative, but what is Florida really doing? Are they winning? Him being a Florida kid, you preach the whole Bama-Florida connection, wide receivers. 
You talk about the likes of uh, who's out of Florida, Calvin Ridley. Uh, Jerry Judy was from Florida, I believe. Uh, Amari Cooper. Like all of our juice came from Florida over the recent years. Them boys know how to get that. They know how to get out. They know how to get out and get his space. Now, Sean Montgomery is a different type of specimen, though. That's why I was saying about earlier about Ryan Williams. We talked about his skill set. There's another Ryan Williams in the next class. They Sean Ron Montgomery. Um, another commit that we might be getting, and I'm just running this down while I'm uh, looking at it. I think we're going to get Juju, but just not anytime soon. I think he'll probably take it early, you know, er into the early summer months. Uh, I think Juju might do a, a, a deal where he might commit at like a 707 tournament um and, and give us a verbal there or he might start giving signs at a 707 tournament wearing maybe a a, a left bama glove or a, le a arm sleeve a bama arm sleeve or a bama hand towel this weekend i guarantee you he leads with a lot of uh alabama um paraphernalia right not paraphernalia <laughs> a lot of alabama um a lot of alabama uh apparel I said paraphernalia, y'all. I'm tripping. A lot of Alabama apparel. And uh, we'll start to see where his head is when it comes to Bama. USC is definitely making a strong push. They can guarantee him a starting spot, basically. You know, I believe they, they can guarantee him to be next. Um, and that's probably the edge that most other schools have on us. Because if Juju commits, I still think the next quarterback up is Ty Simpson. So, um, depending on what his, his mindset is as far as coming in, competing, and learning, and one to you know maybe possibly have to wait his turn staying ready getting better you know being a, a solid backup for a year uh that's probably what he's going to have to face so but a talent like that he looks at the opportunity to be the future and he has a good opportunity for it he has a great opportunity to do that uh david sanders is a guy i'm very high on i saw you know people was talking about he uh clemson is crystal ball i don't like i don't i don't too much care for those crystal ball predictions from that site it is what it is. Even Ty Haywood, they crystal balling him to Oklahoma. Another one I think is going to commit to Bama. So we got a lot of guys, man, a lot of names that we could look at and be like, okay, they they we got some options here that, that might be committing here in the coming weeks. Um, I'm looking at also uh, uh, another offensive lineman in uh, Sisal Alo Fatali, I think is how you pronounce it. Another guy from Bishop Gorman. He and Derek Meadows uh making their visits here soon right it's big you know we've been doing a lot of uh the a lot of uh deals of, of pairing deals meaning getting two guys here from the same program two highly titled guys and seeing what their fields are so a lot of great players that we have options to choose from and i think we're gonna um uh, i think we're just gonna be be ready to do what we do um so yeah that's that, that's like a quick rundown uh flukes i appreciate you for the question um game they're going to pull the upset all right let's do this before we jump into this reality versus reach segment i think we're going to have a good segment of reality versus reach bama basketball real quick let's talk about it um i said this yesterday and i was i think i was talking with uh i forgot who i was talking with but i honestly oh i was in one of the twitter spaces and i honestly believe alabama this team this you this unc team and we'll see tomorrow I believe this is probably the best matchup option we have where we can match up across the board, especially with Reitzel being, uh, you know, game time decision. If we can get him and quality out of him, not just as a body, but quality stops on the defensive end. I think if we can get in our transition game early, pushing the ball on up the field, getting in our early offense. I think we need to pick up the volume as far as how many shots we're getting up. We're going to have to shoot a lot. We're going to have to give ourselves opportunities off the rebound, get second chance points. Um, because this US UNC team is disciplined, but they are not more athletic than us. They don't have way more options than us. They're just disciplined. They play a solid brand of defense. They play a solid brand in the half court sets on their offense. So I look for our team defense to be a key factor. And how this game goes if we do not get team defense established early meaning rotation on running guys off the perimeter because unc is going to attack the rim if we get them shooting i like that if we can keep them shooting i like that just don't let them get hot contested but clean contest uh another point grant nelson grant nelson has to be more of a factor not necessarily with points but with effort staying out of foul trouble 
being able to stay on the floor and be a threat at any time we know he can go off my thing with grant nelson is you don't move your feet good and it's always gonna it's always gonna catch you it's always gonna catch you um <laughs> smooth that we're gonna lose i i thought we were i thought we were dino i really did i called it i don't go check my bracket i don't mind being wrong i have no faith in this style of play it's too inconsistent it is what it is i mean beat me up for saying it. i don't care it's the truth you see how it worked out in the season we've been uh, we've been fortunate to have two rounds of of less talent honestly it is what it is i'm just saying rj davis i like rj davis his game on the opposite side over at unc i like his game but i think we could match up perfect with that young man i think you get rj davis you get a matchup against him say for instance you get a guy like uh hold on let me pull up this spread i want to see what the spread is too for this game dino calling calling me out like i'm gonna change up well when i have a back pedal boy you better recognize I recognize who you who you dealing with the big dog you know what i'm saying better recognize yeah i have no faith in our style of play y'all even now i i, I still don't uh, i still don't have um faith in our this style of play it's just it's not efficient y'all at all you really got to determine on if somebody's hitting shots you can't we can't lean on our defense this year Hmm. Chris Henry Jr. just got an offer, y'all, from Alabama. <laughs> oh, man. Now, let me get a visit. Let me get a visit from this young man. Let me get a visit from this young man. Hold on, y'all. Let me cook real quick. Let me cook real quick. I just need two minutes to cook. Not even two minutes. I need 40 seconds to cook real quick. Hook up some hot ramen real quick. Some top ramen. There we go. yes sir this guy i've been watching him from afar get him on campus you know what and and, and um not to get off sub uh, subject about the bama north carolina game but we're going to talk about something tonight um and a lot of people have had this question about um about bama and their recruiting why are we going after so many wide receivers and and skilled players i i, can, I got a solid answer well, yeah, I like R.J. Davis's game, man. The six foot guard out of um, out of New York. I think he's from New York. Um, I think he averaged like twenty points a game, uh, like four assists or some junk like that. Like that dude is is a solid guard. He's to me probably the probably one of the most pro ready guards on the college ranks right now. Um, I, I, I want I can't wait to see what the matchup between him and Mark Sears is going to look like. Uh, who's going to get hot early, right? Um, and then. Uh, Baycott, man, all we we don't – he's not necessarily an offensive threat to me. It's just his hustle. He gives you these hustle, and he's going to give you like 12 to 15 a game, but he's also – he's going to get 10-plus rebounds. We got to find a way to keep him out, out of – you know, either get him over aggressive, start, you know, boxing him out, force him – because he's an aggressive rebound. Box him out, see see where he's at, um, get a body on him, force him to go over people, around, you know, instead of – uh, go through people instead of around, you know, um, the small things are going to matter against those two guys. So I, I like that analysis, Caleb. You called out two strong names that's, that are possibly their stat guys. Uh, what's good, Brody? My boy Brody in the chat. Look, my boy Brody in the chat. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. Let them know, Brody. No, nah, actually, actually, I line myself up, Demetrius. I line myself up. It looks straight. I was looking rough earlier. I had to go and clean myself up, man. I had to clean myself up a little bit. Had all the little extra flares and stuff under there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to line myself up a little bit. I cut hair. I cut hair, believe it or not. Me, I got a cousin who's very well known in Columbus, Georgia, Pezo the Barber. Um, 
he's probably one of the top three barbers in in the in the city and uh we 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 practiced we started cutting our each other's hair young uh 11 i was 11 peso was eight when he started messing around with clippers and uh we used to cut each other hair from 2001 to up until you know we got grown i i was cutting my own hair my brother blamed me for his hairline not being there no more but he bought now he's been bought since he was like 20 so it ain't had nothing to do with me but yeah i had to get straight patriot life coming through with some more gifted subs hey if you ain't got a gifted sub shout out to my guy patriot life for showing love taking care of the babies the bama babies making sure that they do what they do you know what i'm saying make sure everybody get in there you know what i'm saying patriot life thanks for the gifted membership the other day been working and not been able to join online until tonight first time this week but really appreciate it adam watson we glad that you were able to take advantage of the gifted sub program love what you're doing man love what you're doing love the support that you're here and glad to have you here tonight hopefully i'm able to keep the vibe like i said i'm kind of under the weather but i'm pressing we pressing ain't no excuses still got to bring the energy ain't no excuses right still got to bring the energy if we had a betty yako it, it'd be a wrap just messing with your jaw i really do believe if we was able to keep betty yako man we would see a different style of, of play when it came to defending the rim right um so yeah uh have a show about it listen um the barber i go to uh amp the barber over at new generation he is the one that cuts all the bar i actually have a vlog i'm gonna go ahead and upload it today i think i'm gonna go ahead and upload it tonight uh y'all check my channel I, I uploaded my experience at the barber shop it was pretty cool y'all i ain't gonna lie it was pretty cool um i enjoyed it i i really did those guys took care of me and they solid amp is an og and he's solid uh you you had a super chat it must have been like a, a, a okay juvie 86 my fault he said smook what's good fam how far do you think bama's going to go in this tournament should we be uh if we be north carolina man um and i'm saying like i i like the matchup uh you got baylor and i mean you got clemson and arizona i think arizona might be the test uh we saw what arizona did earlier in the season then we play arizona at the beginning of the season and then um uh, on the opposite side you have purdue gonzaga creighton or tennessee we saw what tennessee did it did to us tennessee actually looks solid still uh they had a close game with texas the other night um <clears throat> uh and I, I think i think tennessee is probably poised to make it to the final four um that gonzaga purdue game is going to be crazy good uh i think i'm gonna take gonzaga in that one over purdue um and then for the uh and like i said we've been we've been fortunate to have the the lineup we had we had charleston and grand canyon uh grand canyon put out st mary's um and we was able to get by grand canyon a 11 point win over grand canyon is not a solid showing i don't care what nobody say um clemson is not a high scoring team so this this matchup uh a clemson of arizona i think arizona matches up better and they get they get the win if we pull it out against north carolina we will have to play the best game to to date to be arizona so i think i think we beat north carolina oh well solid game a, a complete game beats north carolina that's what i'm gonna say um am i 100 percent? don't put me on the spot man y'all know it ain't that i don't have no faith I, i'm a basketball connoisseur so uh that's 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 where i'm at with it we got to play a solid complete game to beat north carolina reality or reach let's say that jay i got you let's save it i swear we about to move to reality or reach i'm gonna acknowledge a few more comments then we're gonna get it get on to the next segment i like creighton up says tennessee you think so mm. uconn bama tennessee houston my final four houston not even in no more bro uconn's out too you still watching the tournament <laughs> i gotta wonder <laughs> the antelopes y'all the antelopes them boys was out here in these streets giving us a run for our money 100 demetrius as a matter of fact we're gonna do a riot on stream i want y'all to be on your phones out in, in in front of your front guards and i want all the paper towels and paper napkins and paper plates forks spoons i want y'all to just litter 
We're going to litter wherever state you in. Litter for the name of Bama, the namesake of Bama, right? Roll Tide. <laughs> I really, I think we had a chance though, y'all. Clean game, I think. Houston and UConn, where? Let me pull this bracket up. Bro, I don't see a Houston or UConn. Or am I tripping? Oh, I'm on the I'm on the other side. Okay, my fault. I'm on the other side. I'm like, okay. You right. So next is Elite Eight. I'm tripping. I'm a I'm a whole thing here. I'm looking at my bracket. I'm looking at my bracket, y'all. My fault. My bracket is screwed. What's crazy is North Carolina still up for me. Clemson, Arizona, Tennessee, Creighton. I still got Gonzaga. I didn't have Purdue there. Um, I didn't have Iowa State. I had Illinois. Um, I got San Diego. I got UConn. I got Duke. I didn't have Houston. And that's that. I don't know why I didn't pick Houston. I've been watching Houston a little bit this year. Uh, and then also North Carolina State. I had them. I didn't have Marquette. I didn't pay attention to their side of the bracket. I thought Florida would end up coming out of there. Um, they played Colorado tough, and Colorado is sneaky. So, uh, you know, I wasn't too far off. But, yeah, my, my bracket looks solid. My bracket looks solid. Yeah, my fault, y'all. Yeah, UConn different. UConn different. UConn different right now. They look like, uh, y'all remember the guard they had? Uh, not Kimba. I think it was the one after Kim, but I forget his name. Shabazz Napier. Y'all remember Shabazz Napier? Ooh, UConn was nasty then, boy. UConn beat Northwestern the other night, I think, by like 20. Almost beat him by 20. They had that first round against that uh, Stetson Bennett University. Y'all think so? I don't know. Nah, I was, I was looking at just one side of my bracket. I was looking at one side of my bracket. Why do I have the call in segment thing up? Y'all sitting there looking at it too. Mm, Y'all ghetto. What's good though? Chill night. All right, let's run into our reality versus reach. Good. Auntie Janet, like when we do that. Antoine, it's good. Antoine ain't even been catching it. He's been missing him good <laughs> yeah man but yeah let's jump into reality versus reach man uh let's pop it off with the fan funder and uh super chat donation from our guy jay jackson he came through with a reality versus reach reality versus reach five dollar super chat from jay jackson that's my boy he said the board adds some new concepts to the unis this fall i think it'll be cool to incorporate some black or gray with the crimson I'm gonna say I'm gonna go I'm gonna go early and I'm gonna say reach y'all run it up reality or reach I'm gonna go early and say reach and then I give y'all a second to run it up and when y'all say y'all answers please give us some explanations I want to jump into this topic I think it's good you fizz your fingers been busy ew wash your hands boy Antoine, wash your hands, boy. Sticky, sticky, sticky. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Reach, reach, Antoine. I feel you. I feel you. I think it's a reach, too, man. Bama is going to try to keep some tradition. Hey, I can see small things happening. Maybe a helmet edition. Maybe, maybe a logo on a helmet. Maybe a block A on a helmet. Um, maybe I don't know, man. I'm just saying, reach me personally. I just don't, I don't see it happening this year. Reach that he wants to touch it this first year. Facts. I think he wins a national championship. He gets some championship edition type type jerseys. You know, reach. Listen up, youngsters. Don't touch the uniforms. <laughs> I love it, man. Hard reach, auntie. Says if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You need stay. I'm a, I'm a classic man myself when it comes to Bama uniforms. Like other schools, Oregon when they did it, Texas Tech got some fire. Louisville got some fire. 
uh shoot who else who else got some fire it's not many teams in this in the sec that got fire you know what i'm saying so i think we keep it i like uh i like uh texas how they kind of shape theirs up a little bit but kind of ah yeah i don't know i don't know man it's a reach for me too steven I, it's a reach for me big homie 334 reach they don't like mess with tradition for some reason and it's not a bad thing to me i think you kind of set yourself apart you got some of the blue buds like us penn state has done some we've made small adjustments put it like that i would i would like to see the white helmets though i ain't gonna lie i would look like to come out in all white white helmets white tops white pants white white cleats white socks I, I would like to see that a white out i would like a white out when y'all like a white out imagine brian denny doing a white out at night with them red lights them them uh them them lights going crazy after a touchdown ooh, ooh, ooh. i think reach because debo debo don't want to come in and literally change every gap <laughs> moon rocker you been grabbing my cup moon rock you been grabbing my cup man Stay off my drink, bro. Stay off my cup. Bama don't mess with jerseys. Uh, they do. They've changed it up in the past, man. Let's let's not get let's not get on that debate again. Cause uh, shout out to my guy Marvin Constant. Uh, I ain't gonna say what network he on, but uh, shout out to Marvin Constant, man. He had a nice little rant about the white unis. He actually schooled uh, Kiana Cope, and Kiana Cope was like, "Man, I'm gonna have to do my research." You know, I like when they do content like that. When you schooling people, when you putting stuff on notice, like you you giving us the history lessons. Um, I remember, I don't remember watching them play in the white, but I do remember seeing pictures. You know, my first time visiting, almost at two hundred likes for real. Let me see if I can pull this up, y'all. Give me a second. That's crazy. We almost at two hundred likes on the night stream. I appreciate y'all for real. That means a lot. Because I think we're stuck at like 104 with Coach Sean. That's solid, you know, to lead off. Because most people are just coming in late. We at 199. One more like, we're going to be at 200, y'all. One more like, we're going to be at 200. We at 200 likes. Shout out to the super, the super, super undefeated chat for running up the likes, man. Getting the, getting the likes up. Getting the algorithm going crazy for us. 200 likes is crazy. 200 likes is crazy. We had two on one. Keep running up. Keep running up. Keep running it up. Appreciate y'all, man. Really do. Really do. I really do. 201 likes. 204. We had 204. Keep running it up then. Keep running it up. If you haven't uh locked in. So reality versus reach. We're seeing a lot of reach. I think we all gonna say that's a reach. You like the trade tra uh, tradition, poetic justice, poetic injustice. I like that name. Terms and chromatic helmet, I could rock with that. That's the chromatic is like that uh, that shiny feel. I would, I could rock with that. With the the, uh, I could rock with crimson, right? Maybe uh, uh, like a chrome silverish block A on the back, right? And the number not as big, but up towards the the top of the helmet, and maybe the 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 elephant tusk gray right face mask right i can see that <laughs> i can see that uh no y'all like when i be doing like my hair bosses and stuff i'm a fool man crimson carbon fiber i like that you know what let's 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 just let's just jump down this rabbit hole let's go down let's 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 freaking jump okay let's freaking jump let's let's design a new uni right all gray right Crimson numbers, gray helmet, white number with crimson lining, right? And the stripes might need to be white. What y'all thinking? Or, 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 or instead of white to accent, let's get some black on that thing. They need to need to play up hounds tooth more and yeah crimson carbon fiber whoa that's revolution yeah I, i'm feeling it you know what we do need some type of hounds tooth um you're right we do need some type of hounds tooth incorporation with our with our uniforms i think so <laughs> mm. 
John. So we get new uniforms. We better go 12 and 0 regular season. We better run the table, right? I feel you on that, man. I'm, I'm liking that engine. Oh, man. Y'all funny, man. Man, my family, have a good night. I see everyone tomorrow evening. I spend time with my cousin tomorrow afternoon. Gonna miss you, ladies and handsome men. Oh, thank you. Y'all remember on uh, Friday, she was like, uh, I forget her name. Uh, dang, what's her name? She was like, Craig, are you high? He was like, hi. She was like, yeah, you look high. Craig said. <laughs> he looked at her and laughed. Y'all remember that? <laughs> but no, nah, uh, at the end of the day, reality versus reach, I think is a reach. I don't want to test the uniforms. I like what we do. If we do, I need it to be like, I not necessarily I pop. It don't need to be flashy. It needs to still maintain that traditional, that strong uniform look. It was already crazy seeing all them different color mouthpieces on the field last year. They did have a pounds two collar back in 04. I gotta go find that. Let me see. I gotta find that. I'm looking for it real quick. Is this it? Oh, okay. Was this it? Was this it, brother? Is this it right here? Somebody let me know. Is that it? As if that's it, that's ugly. We better not ever do that again. We better not ever do that again. That's ugly. That is ugly. That is ugly, Caleb. They better not ever do that crap again. And they had the shadow of Houndstooth around the numbers, I think, back in 2010. Mm -mm. We don't do that. Yeah, that's ugly. The white me. <laughs> yeah, that's ugly. We ain't doing that no more. We ain't doing that. I would love black and crimson. Black and crimson, keep it simple. I think uh, black and crimson up top, right? But then I think we get too much too close to Georgia, looking like Georgia with the black. Now, if we go blackout, I think if we go blackout, we go crazy, right? All black Bama gear with a red Alabama, hey? Like some of the shirts we wear? Yeah, I ain't. I don't like that one either, bro. <laughs> that thing ugly. Ooh, flu. Why you? Why you trying to jump? Why you trying to blow up my spot, man? Why you trying to blow up my spot? I thought I told y'all Dejan Lee is is my. Is, that's my recruit. I'm going to claim Dejan Lee. If Dejan Lee pop in here again tonight, like he said he did the other night, he, he heard me claim him as nephew. As nephew. Yeah, Dejan Lee, I like. I appreciate the 199 Super Chat, but yeah, I, I, I think it may not be soon. He might drag it out, you know, wait till signing day. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a dude. Black jerseys never go well. For who? Georgia? Appreciate that 199 super chat too, flukes. All right, college football, college football wish list. Come on, y'all. Give me a wish list for what y'all want out of college football season this year when it comes to Alabama. What do y'all want? Let's talk about some stats. We could talk about awards. What's the college football wish list? If you if you can get one wish for Alabama football this college football season, what are y'all wishing for? Hey, that's UGA. They ain't Bama. It didn't matter what UGA played us in. They lost to us, so it don't matter. Hey, hey, they came to the wrong spot. They 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 came against the wrong team talking about a blackout game that year. I was I was in college that year. I remember freshman. I remember that year. Really put us on the map that year. Mark Rich actually had a uh, Mark Rick had a solid squad that year. Yup. 
another natty. Ooh, Milro 3,000 yards passing 30 TDs. That, that is reachable. That is definitely reachable. And Dino said Georgia going eight and four. I like that. Going undefeated, Carla. I, I, I could. It's a wish list. Joe Moore Award. Antoine, I like how you're thinking, man. With the amount of uh, struggles we had last year with this offensive line, if we could flip it around and become the Joe Moore Award winner for the O-line, I think that's a huge thing to, to claim. Um, offensive line not allowing sacks all day, yeah. And I mean, that's that's that falls in that uh, Joe Moore Award. Uh, <laughs> Antoine, you caught me. Appreciate you, boy. I forgot to do it. It's good. Antoine, what happened to the S on him? Because you, I think Antoine, you started Auntie Janet paying attention to the fact that I was doing good. I'm really saying it's good, but I forget what move. Uh, Bruce Almighty, when he was like, it's good. Like, that's where I got there from. So, <laughs> national title, Austin French, 100%. That's that's good on the wishes. Miro isn't passing for 30 TDs. Adam, you're a doubter. Stop doubting him. Stop doubting him. Adam, I, I, you know what? I don't like your mirror energy, bro. I have to be honest with you. I don't like your mirror energy. I don't like your mirror energy. We can talk about it. You're, you're my, you're my, you're my context for this because you really be going hard on Miro, and he was literally one of four quarterbacks in the playoffs this year. He had 23 touchdowns last year. Five of them were called back. No, seven of them were called back. He would have had 30 touchdowns this year. Seven passing touchdowns by Miro were called back. Two in one game against Texas, one against Ole Miss, one against Middle Tennessee State. We had one against Tennessee that got called back. You had one against LSU that get that get called back. And then the Georgia Michigan game. That's eight. That's eight. And you're trying to tell me he can't pass for 30? Adam, don't come in here on that mess. Tell you. I don't agree with you. Mm. <laughs> you got, but you got to tell me. You got to tell me why, Adam. Tell me why. Why you don't? Why you don't think Miro can hit thirty? I hope you're wrong too. <laughs> Beyond impressive. Why we not? Why we, <laughs> Adam? You like that? <laughs> I can't wait to link up, Adam. You a good dude, man. I rock with you, Adam. For real. That's not outrageous, man. I mean, Jalen Hurts, I think Jalen Hurts had 30 uh, passing TDs his, his freshman year. His, fr his first year starting. Or was it like 28? It's not crazy to see Jalen Miro second year, barring injuries. It's easy, man. How many did uh, Michael Penix have? Let's, let's look up Michael Penix. Look up Michael Penix. Michael Penix had 36. Michael Penix had 36. And that was two games where he had less than 30 pass attempts. That was a lot of games where he had less than 30 pass attempts. And you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, y'all. Oregon State. Al. And it was teams that they like blew out that he didn't have more than 30 pass attempts. Still had four TDs though. So, you know, I feel like, and this is why I said it's, it's obtainable because games where we should be blowing teams out, I don't think we're going to wait for, um, for uh, you know, the game to come to us. I think we're going to oppose our will early, jump out early, three or four touchdowns, Real quick, first half, go in with a five, six score lead. And then second half is going to be a development for, for those young guys. I see another one. K-Spray says, Miro, seven to 800 yards, rushing 10 TDs. Ooh, I could see that. I could see that. So you're saying Miro, and, and so this is what we're saying. We're saying Miro can have, because we already factored in the 300 uh negative yards that he took last year you cut that in half you put his stats right at uh let's look at the rushing i'm pulling it up right now y'all my bad uh 
total. Total stats for this year rushing. Miro had 531 yards. So you cut them 300 negative yards um, in half. He puts them at right at 600 and he had 12 TDs. I, I, could, I could rock with that. I can rock with that. I can rock with that case, spray. Solid. So 30 passing, 30, I say 33 passing, 11 rushing. I can see it. I think he improves. Mil hey, Moon Rocker. No, I think he improves, but I'm still a bit concerned about him reading defenses, going through progressions, runs too quickly, and sometimes hold the ball way too long. That was in a different scheme that forced him to be a pro style quarterback, Adam. That's that's what I'm saying. This is not a pro style offense. This is going to put him off platform a lot. It's going to put him to the perimeter, quick one one read option like go to the screen, tap jet sweep options like a lot of those cheap. He's going to get a lot of cheap yards early. And I'm gonna tell you this inside scoop. I got to see a little bit of seven on sevens, a little bit of eleven on elevens. These are things that he does fluently. So they may not look like anything impressive on during practice on the field, but in the game, those are things that Steve Sarkeesian did with the amount of talent that he had in the quarterback room. Uh, what else? What else? What Sean did? What Sean picked it look like? Let the running backs run. Let's see Milro throwing the ball to receivers. Uh, he gonna have to use his legs too. I'm gonna tell you that right now, Dino. This is coaching staff not gonna let Milro not use his legs. I promise you. I promise you, I don't care how much he improves. Uh, they're going to use his legs. See, Michael Penix didn't have the same type of explosion as Miro. They're going to have a lot of design, QB reads and runs. Um, it was actually a segment where I saw them working read option, speed option. Yeah. Um. Okay, Adam, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Michigan had the, the number one rated defense defense in the nation, right? And he still pushed them to overtime. Georgia, he beat Georgia. He beat Georgia with the lack of offensive protect, offensive line protection, with the lack of uh, you know, the, the play calling that didn't favor the, the move of the game, the mood of the game. And in Texas, that was his first big time start. And it was at home, and he had 14 points caught off the board, two passing touchdowns at that. And we lost by 10. So that, that's how I, I, I combat that argument. With all the struggles, he still takes his game first, man. 14 points caught off the board. We win that game if those points don't come back. And that these are things that weren't of his doing. It wasn't his fault. So. Okay, Spray. Perfect point. Coach KD says he'll fit the offense to player personnel. Miro's feet are another weapon. Last year, he was too indecisive about passing or throwing. I think play calling is going to help him with that. I like that case break. Not only is he a great leader, he's probably the best football player on the field. Negative. Negative, Adam. Uh, hey, Abigail, my wifey in the chat. What's up, Shotty? Connor Tati hits all his field goals. I can't go back to the bad kicking days. Ooh, good one. That's a good one to have on the wish list. Now, listen, um, Connor Tati has a lot of power in that leg. I think the control thing is what he's working on. Control. He's working on that control. Adam, are you sure you don't hate Miro? I get vibes that you don't like Miro. I want you to sign a, a affidavit saying that you are a, a Miro supporter. Because you've been screaming for Tom, Ty Simpsons for, for two years now. And it's a reason why he's not out there in front of Miro. I'm going to tell y'all right now. Mike G, Tommy Reese actually did decent in my, in my opinion. I think he did decent. Tommy Reese is two years younger than me. I'm 33. So... As an offensive coordinator on that level, I think he did decent, not consistent at all. When he found his groove in certain games, he he exploited it, he showed it, and then he would leave it. You know, um, I wish he played a little bit more Madden. Um, and I be he could have played Madden with this group last year and had a lot more success, right? I Meaning putting Miro 
out in his space off off platform to and move in the pocket for him. I think he did all right. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, that's my shawty, man. Demetrius. Buy your ass up. You get oh sorry. Better walk, tread carefully. That's mine right there, boy. That's the wife. You better tell him. Y'all better tell him. I don't play by mine, boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, definitely. Job was way too big for him. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I'm right there with you. Um, but it was it for what he he was called to do. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm a '90s baby, y'all. '90s, literally, 1990. Tell him, Marquita. Hey, I think you gotta worry more so about the sisters in the chat getting on your neck, Demetrius, for that one. Call him, Marquita. Quasha, you gotta worry about them. KT, you gotta worry about them getting on you for, for jumping on that one. And and fellas, I'm gonna give y'all some, I'm gonna give y'all some juice, right? I'm gonna give y'all, I'm gonna give y'all some uh give y'all some insight. All this, uh, never mind. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm leaving out. <laughs> I think Tommy Reese gonna do good wherever else he go. I think Tommy Reese gonna do good wherever else he go as a coordinator. I really do. I really do. <laughs> Cynthia said, "Worry about us." Y'all better tell him. <laughs> I better then. I think Ty is number two, but I have no idea who number three is. I tell you who number three is right now, um, based off what I seen at practice, and it was back to being Dylan Larnigan. I think there's a solid battle for number three, <laughs> if that helps anybody. One, two. Is uh one is Milro, two is tie, three is is a battle. <laughs> he's tied in coach for the Browns right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's gonna be I think he's gonna be straight. If he ever get an offensive coordinator job again, I think he's gonna be uh <laughs> I think he's gonna be straight, y'all. I think he's gonna be straight, honestly. Demetrius, you good, man. I man, I don't take no offense. I know my wife bad. Dude, I know she turned heads everywhere we go. She turned heads. Uh, she turned heads everywhere we go. Yeah, man. Has Tommy Reese got a job? Yeah, he's a uh, he's a tight end coach. Tight end coach. Three will be Austin Mack eventually. Adam, Adam, what makes you say this? Let's have this discussion. <laughs> Let's have this discussion, Adam. I want you to reply as soon as possible. I'm going to take another sip. we got some GMO. <laughs> it's the cup, man. It's the cup, bro. It's the cup. This is quality cup. The uh, paint came off of it. Y'all remember the Alabama A used to be on it? I be using them the crap out of this one. I done watched it a couple times. But yeah. Adam. Yeah, Tommy Reese definitely accepted uh adam i want i want your uh your, your take on austin mack good man it's getting good it's getting down to the bottom eric what's good family welcome in welcome in david brown will be a beast yes quinn edwards random random comment but you are so on point with that comment let's talk about austin mack i just believe he will be he been in the board system for a year already He's 17. He really hasn't been in the system to actually implement it. Um, he hasn't had the one-on-one -on -one time. He hasn't really thrown or operated a, a offensive schematics or a play chart. And just because the board's bringing the offensive scheme from Washington doesn't mean it's going to be ran like it was at Washington. Uh, Coach Sheridan kind of alluded to that in his interview uh, yesterday after practice. Um, there are nuances to learning this scheme. So it's new, not only for the players, but for the coaching staff, how they want to utilize assets. They've never dealt with a talented offensive line like this. They never dealt with a talented running back group or a quarterback room where five, four quarterbacks can literally start. Um, they've never dealt with the amount of wide receivers that they have available and the amount of skill sets you have. Usually you have a route runner, a jump ball and a possession guy, right? You, uh, a burner. You get what I'm saying? That's what you usually have. Well, in this group, you got 
wide receivers that can take hands offs. You got wide receivers that can cross the, you know, the deep crosses is especially. You got wide receivers who are first phase uh, dominant. You got wide receiver who are second and third phase dominant, right? You got wide receivers who can press the ceiling, break right down, sink into sink their hips into the ground. And this is all things Jamarcus Shepard said that I've been saying about the assets that we have in that wide receiver room. So you factor in all that. And as a coach, you kind of, your eyes just get wide open and you have to focus on keeping them narrow and, and identifying the small things that you can just continue to just pick at and deal with and expose those things so that you can use them to your advantage later on. So because of that, Austin Mack is behind the power club. His mechanics are very, very sloppy, uh, strong arm talent, very athletic, but his mechanics are very sloppy and it's because he's young. It's because he's young. And Dylan Lonergan is a, is a is a is a guy that literally has it. He has it all. Dylan Lonergan hits the portal. If he hits the portal, he's starting somewhere this year. I heard some other reporters saying Mac is looking better than Lonergan right now. How would they know? Is it really true? Antoine, if they are saying that, it's because they saw Austin Mac taking snaps first before Lonergan. But during the eleven on eleven time that I saw for the, I think they had like eight or eight to ten snaps between the two. Um, for that that third group, right? Um, I saw Lonigan looking more confident, more fluent, understanding what you know what the direction was of the play call, um, and that's just my personal observation. And I'm not saying Mac is horrible because the first day I got to see some of that action, Mac was you know making plays. He wasn't consistent. Kind of reminds me, uh, not not his play style, but his evaluation. What I'm evaluating kind of reminds me of what the reports about Ty Simpson were last year. Just has everything that you want, just inconsistent, not building that, building on plays. He'll have a good one, then have three bad ones, have a good one, have two bad ones, have two good ones, then have one bad one. Like it's 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 like that with him right now. So it'll be good. Everyone said how good Seth looked in practice. Listen, George, this the thing. Uh, KT says she QB1. Yeah, I, I mean, and you entitled too. I think I think Mac is gonna be good. I think Mac is gonna be good. Um, and I agree with you. He, he, I just don't think he'll be number three this year. If Lonergan stays, um, and Simpson stays, he's not going to be number three. That's just my personal opinion. And that's not anything slight towards him. I think Austin Mack, if, if he has a, a the patience like Ty Simpson, I think he could be a one-year guy. Move on. You know, he could be the transition guy to Juju, um, if that be the case. And I really feel like we're going to have a good chance to sign Juju and get that commit, that flip. From USC, uh, George said, "Stop talking about practice. People playing good. Everyone said how good Seth looked in practice, and look how that went. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this. Last year's spring, we I think and, and Joy, you you had to know me to know me. I was not big on Seth McLaughlin. I was more so hoping that we would see him return to that Georgia game when he put himself on the map. That was always my hope. We saw the potential, never saw the consistency though." Now I can I can put some names on some people that were hyping up Seth all last year. And there's not anybody on this panel. Okay. Me too. Me too, Adam. I really do. I think him and Ty Simpson will battle it out. I think they will battle it out. Um and, and but I think Ty Simpson has the edge. Whoever doesn't win it, I think they transfer. I think they transfer it. And and rightfully so. Rightfully so. KT for Heisman. I'm with it. AT, what number you gonna wear as a quarterback? Seek True said, but I'm going undefeated. Way to come in with the energy. You think that we have a shot to get a commit from Zion Grady back to Alabama? I really do. Yes. Especially now with the defensive line talent starting to load up in this room. And the edge rusher talent starting to load up. Um, yeah, I really do. I think we do. I might be the next Mac Jones. I mean, if he sticks around, he is. He is. When you're a hero, it happens. Do we have any tight ends that can be factored this year in the past game? Um, honestly, I think CJ Dupree will finally get that exposure. I think he's a solid option looking at how he moves on the field. Robbie Oots is a freaking tank, but he's very agile, very athletic. Danny Lewis is going to surprise a lot of people, y'all. I'm telling y'all right now, Danny Lewis, for people that don't know what he's capable of, he's going to surprise a lot of mainstream media. For me, I, I think he was just behind two, three veterans last year. And still could have been utilized, you know? 
Caleb, yes, I think he will be back um, next season. How much playing time? See, with those type of injuries, if it is, in fact, a fact, uh, fracture in the femur, that's a painful injury to deal with. That's not a weight-bearing injury. Like, you can't put weight on it early. You got to really – there's tests that are involved. And with the nuances of technology and science, man, you don't know how long these guys – y'all cutting up on a Wednesday? High stays, definitely. They say tie, tie starts next year. You mean 25 after uh, – after uh after uh Jay Lamiro leaves, yeah. Danny Lewis is gonna be that dude. Danny Lewis is definitely gonna be that dude. All right, let me catch up because I think I'm a little behind. Yeah, we were talking about and we we ain't uh our undefeated chat talk right now. We got about five, ten more minutes of this. Um Jalen Hell news is definitely sad. This chat for sure, myself. We've all been very high on him. Um, Caleb Odom, I believe, uh, was was really taken to learning behind or with um, Jalen Hill. Both of those guys are really smooth route runners. Um, Jalen Hill is not as big as uh, uh, Caleb Odom, but he plays huge. He plays big X like Caleb Odom. So um, losing him, thank God for depth, right? Thank God for depth, but losing him is definitely a, a big hit on the morale side. Um, you never want to see guys go down in spring, man. You never want to see guys go down at all. But spring ball, experiencing injuries in spring ball is always a tough hit because um, the spring game is such an important evaluation period. That three hours of, of spring practice, of that spring game is really, but I think it's like an hour and a half, two hours. But um, that, 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 that spring game is important. It's really important. On Josiah Sharma, I heard some rumbling earlier, but I you y'all know me. J Listen, Jermaine, I'm not the one that goes and looks for who Bama should target. I'm the one that when Bama targets somebody, I go and I start getting the scoop. So once we confirm that we're targeting somebody, that's when I start going. Boom. Once we offer somebody, that's when I get at. I I'm not ever going to overextend myself. To me, that's thirsty, right? I'm a Bama content creator. I'm a Bama reporter. I don't think I need to know where everybody in the nation is going. Only the guys that Bama is targeting and the guys that are interested in Bama. That's my interest. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Coach, think Odom could be another Jimmy Graham? Nah, he's not even playing tight end anymore. <laughs> he's a wide receiver. Odom is going to be your next Calvin Sanders. Or Calvin Johnson. I said Calvin Sanders. Calvin Johnson. That's who Odom's going to be. <laughs> watch it watch what i say can rush there is no Jalen hell update uh there's only rumors nothing confirmed uh we talked about it a little bit earlier uh there 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 was rumors that it might be a a, a a femur fracture right and that's the lower uh y'all make sure i'm saying it right that's the lower part of the leg the big bone on the lower part of the leg um, and if there's a fracture there or any type of break there, that could be anywhere from six weeks to six months of recovery. So we'll see. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll be ready. I don't think he's going to be pushed into a role where he's forced. Fibula, fibula. Get me right, Auntie Janet. Yeah. Smook, it was Chris uh, Clint Lamb on Bama Online stream with Jimmy Stein about the O-line and DBs five days ago. They said Latham had dropped about 20 pounds. Right. Latham and Proctor had dropped about the same, maybe more. How does he know that? And I'm gonna have to ask Clint about that because uh Proctor was on campus, he looked fat when he came down here to visit. He still looked fat, y'all. He still looked the same. So I'm gonna have to talk with Clint. Clint's a, a very reliable source, though. So if Clint's saying it, I could rock with it. Dino said he's bet he bet Ryan Williams is north of 600. I'm gonna say south of 600, close to 600. Lower Bones is tibia and fibula. Hey, put me on game, y'all. He has a fracture in one of them. <laughs> put it like that. Yeah, uh, it is definite that he's coming back. Uh, and I'm not happy about it. I don't too much care for it. But I'm, I'm, I will say that is another body in the room quality. If he can get over that that hump, get that mentality right, I'm all for it. 
commit for real. Oh yeah, Adam. I don't know about y'all, but I'm here in T-Town and while he was on campus deciding, he did not look like he lost anything. That joke would be, he a big boy. <laughs> y'all stupid. He big bone, man. My boy fat. I mean, he an offensive lineman. They supposed to be fat. They supposed to be big. And I'm not, I'm not dogging him. I, I want y'all to understand one thing. K, I don't think Caden Proc is trash by any means. Okay. I don't think Caden Proc is trash by any means. I think for what he was put up against this first year, his true freshman year at left tackle, that's a that's a hard ask. Like left tackle position is hard for anybody. But a true freshman with that much weight on him, going against the likes of the 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 guy from Arkansas who was probably the least athletic edge or end that he went against and the way that guy just babied him then you look at how he performed in week two against texas usf beat him up tennessee beat him up old miss game was the first time we saw him actually play solid arkansas he played uh he played horrible kentucky game he played solid like he only had out of the what is it 14 game season he only had like four solid games y'all like solid games so that boy is corn fed, not cornbread, corn fed. He from Iowa. Them jokers eat corn. They don't eat cornbread. He came down here and started getting a hold of them dog on fried Oreos. That's what happened. Ken Rush asking for another Jalen Hill update. Gave it to you twice already, brother. Sorry. Um <laughs> facts. I was lonely than a mug. Exactly. So why he was trying to go back there. And then they was talking to him during the season. That pisses me off, man. Hey, Qu Quinn Edwards, and and this is what I don't want y'all to get uh, hyped about. He's not saying that to say that Alabama is going to benefit from I, you know, that that it's all going to be big stories with Alabama. I think he's saying that it's not going to be crazy to see guys that did the same thing Proctor did get back in the portal. They literally just got there. Some guys are opting out of spring practice because they already announced they're going to the portal. Right? It's crazy to me. College football. This ain't. This is who does that? The NFL, the NFL, they opt out of OTAs so they can negotiate contracts. That's what we're looking at, y'all. <laughs> Reality reach, Proctor under 350 game one. Oh, yeah, he's going to be under. Reality reach, Pro Proctor start game one. I'm going to say reach, hard reach. Let's talk about it. I know I'm going to get y'all mad before I get off here. <laughs> come on man reality to reach proctor is going to start game one i say a hard reach i'm talking about one of these reaches i'm talking about one of them reaches <laughs> no he did it adam he did not do good against uga he had two solid reps against UGA everything else he was getting pushed into the pocket Dino I don't care what you say Proctor is not the best offensive line he wasn't the best last year he was just bigger nah Antoine I don't think y'all understand the nuances of this offense and schematics he has no familiarity with this scheme golly man thank y'all I, I, and I feel I feel so bad. Y'all gonna y'all gonna see to everybody, staff and players. You know what? I'm gonna get y'all some real inside scoop on that. I'm gonna get y'all. I'm gonna get y'all the real on what that what that trajectory looks like. I like the reach. I like the reach, Dino. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the other side of the of the fence for this one. You're missing it heavy with this one. He got to stand on business. That's right, Nicole. And he ain't stand on business. He ain't stand on business to, to when it was time to, for for everybody when everybody else stood on business. He dipped out. He ran and jumped in the car in the back seat, put his head in between his legs, and and said, "Take me home." Y'all remember on Boys in the Hood when uh Trey was in the back seat? He was like, "Let me out. Let me out." That's what Proctor did. He asked to be let out when it got time to get gritty get nasty and avenge ricky he won with it he won with it he tapped out he tapped out 
<laughs> no, nah, I don't think that'll happen. I think we're happy to have him. I just, I don't care to see him on the field jet first game. Jaden Roberts is definitely our best lineman. He's number one. I think Booker is number two when it comes to skill sets. And y'all know who else I'm excited to see if he ends up getting a nod or some type, some, some type of way gets put in the rotation in the game. I want to see James Brockemeyer have a, a, be able to contribute to the team this year. That kid is working his tail off. Literally. All that money, y'all. All that money, Sean. <laughs> I just noticed your uh, avatar, too. Boy, you crazy. He got a lot of catching up to do. Adam, it's hard to move. Just think about it. Jaden Roberts is down to like 290, 285. Did y'all see the video I posted earlier, me and Jaden? Check this out. Look at, look at how, look. First of all, look at the height. I want y'all to see. Look, look at the height. Can we zoom that? We can't. Look at the height. All right. I want y'all to look at the height. Jaden Roberts, I'm 6'3", so that means he's a solid 6'5", right? 6'6", six, six maybe. Um, but look at it. Look how lean he is. Look at his shoulders. Not a big old belly. His legs, I mean, big tree trunk legs. The dude is big. Look at his forearms. He has thighs for forearms. So, and, and I think he's pushing like 285, 290 right now. Right at 300, right? Um... So you you talking about the type of lineman that we're that we're trying to mold? He fits the mold, right? He fits the mold. So I, I think Hulk looks skinny. Nah, I don't. I don't think he's skinny, bro. I don't think he's skinny. He looks like a solid NFL offensive line, offensive tackle. I think he ends up transitioning to tackle at the next level. To be honest, he has the link. Um, dang, I didn't realize how tall I was, y'all. I'm pretty tall, huh? Shout out to Ephraim Davis for the $2 super chat. He said, who else is watching Bama football reruns? Not me. I ain't gonna lie. This is the first offseason I haven't because of the work that I'm doing now. I don't have to speculate and do all the extra that most fans have to do, which is a blessing. Um, and like that's, I'm, I'm very appreciative to not be in that position. But uh, if I do get to it, it I'm gonna watch all the bad games. That's just me. I'm I'm that I'm that guy that watches the bad games. I'm sorry. My wife be joking on me about doing that. Jaden is super small compared to last year. That's what I'm saying. And he's still like 290, 295. Will matter in this offense. Yep, you're right. Robert looks good, man. That's a that's an athletic offense alignment. That's what you want. You've been watching Barbie movies. <laughs> oh man. Mac Truck Hulk. Facts, man. He looked like real life Hulk though. Y'all remember before the animated version, the real life Hulk? Yeah, he definitely looked like him. And y'all gotta think like after practice, your body is showing like dehydration. You know, you're not, you're not as swollen and puffed up as you are when you come out the weight room. Um, yeah, Cynthia, don't be talking about me. I do got some long legs. I got a I got a weird upper torso. It's, it's proportion, you know what I'm saying? But I got some long legs. Bro, to be honest, Proctor is very scared at all costs. Um, UGA game, he did he did good. Last scheme, I'm sure he wasn't comfortable at all with. And y'all reaching too hard. SEC is the toughest conference in college football. Zachary, I'm going to shoot your comment down and I'm going to fire you up. Because I'm going to tell you like this. Caden Proctor did not play a good game against Georgia. We, we ran a lot of things away from his side so that it could be nullified. Because we knew he was probably the weakest uh, link on the offensive line when it came to the type of scheme. Go look at the game. We played to Jalen Strong's side. Jalen didn't capitalize on a lot of that, but we played to Jalen Strong's side. We even ran to the right. We didn't run a lot to the left. We ran to, to we we pulled Roberts one. I mean, we pulled Booker a couple times to load up on that right. JC Latham and J Jaden Roberts was our our cattle, our, our cattle horses in that uh in that in that game as far as leaning on protection. The way we flowed the offense, any opportunity we had, we took it to the right. So miss me with that, brother. Miss me with that. And I'm just talking facts. Just saying. Uh, against Ole Miss, Seth snapped the ball back to Oxford. When <laughs> Adam, 
Adam, I wish you was in here earlier when the uh, country dude was in here. That was funny. That was funny. Tell him, big homie. We didn't. We didn't try. We didn't give. We didn't give Caden Proctor a chance to get exposed against Georgia. K spray. People don't. People don't want to. People don't want to. Uh, like face it, man. Struggle all year. Let's put it like that. Let's put it like that. Great coffee. Let's give him some credit because he did show up some games. For him to say that he showed up the Georgia game, we made sure that he didn't have to show up with the play caller. <laughs> Dino, did you did you did you not listen to my whole rant earlier? I feel like he has the potential, but leaving early, missing spring practice is going to hurt him. I'm telling y'all right now, it's it's a fact, man. This ain't a wide receiver. This is an offensive lineman who gave up the most pressures on the offensive line last year. The most. And think about all the problems we had on the O-line. Steph McLaughlin did give up the most pressures. Jaden Roberts and Tyler Booker didn't. J.C. Latham didn't. It was the true freshman left tackle. They attacked him and they exposed him badly all year. Very few teams, every team that had an athlete at the edge or somebody coming off the edge, they exposed him badly. He could not get out of space. He could not cover ground out of his kick slide. Like it was bad for him. But when he did do and execute on, on at a high level, he showed up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to light him up, boy. At least we didn't get Seth to come back. Listen, that was a blessing of this offseason. And I mean, Jesus Christ, if you can keep him away, please do. If if, if Josh Pate was alluding to Seth McLaughlin probably coming back. I'm going to go jump on Josh Pate. I know Josh personally. I followed Josh since, you know, his Columbus day. I'm going to go beat Josh up. Hayden Proctor got bull rush. How you get bull rush at 6'6", 6'7"? How you get, how you get ran over at 6'6", 6'7", 360 pounds, 350 pounds, whatever he was. South Florida. William, South Florida game against South Florida prospects. South Florida players. They just exposed him, and, and I give him I give him a little bit of a of a pass because that was his third game in college football. But that ain't you. That ain't SEC defense. That ain't no SEC D line. They were very slow, too big and too slow. Who calling me a hater? Who said that? Demetrius, I'm a hater. I'm a hater. When I'm stating facts, he gave up the most sacks. He gave up the most pressures from his position. You just playing blind. You being soft. I must call it. You being soft. You, you, you're what's wrong with this generation now. We accept their mistakes and don't hold them accountable, but we want to give them everything as if they've done something to earn it. He ain't earned the left tackle starter spot to, to come back into this new scheme, and he ain't earned it. He didn't earn it last year. He was the biggest. They wanted to go big, and you see how that affected us. Anybody who disagree, step up to the plate because I'm ready to cook now. No, he can't. He can't. He still he still technically he can't come to Bama until April after spring is closed. He can't even be on he can't be in the facilities working out or nothing until after the spring practices are done. He is still a a a, a player on the roster at at uh Iowa. That's why they said he intends to enter the portal after the spring closes. Go read. Telling y'all, Ephraim, we have we had that game one. All we had to do was run the ball for closer for a closer field goal for Riker and run the clock down to two seconds. But it's that facts, facts, facts. Y'all going back to that? I don't want to talk about the Tennessee game. That would make my, my my stomach hurt. He was a freshman. He probably should have been allowed a a year before. That's what I said. I think after the Texas game, we should have tried different options. We should have kept trying, rotating. Because you had Wilkin for him, you had Miles McVay, you had Elijah Pritchett. Well, Pritchett was injured, dealing with injuries. So you had a lot of guys that you could have just tried out. I feel like Wilkin for me would be getting the same type of uh same type of ridicule coming into the season because of the what they were faced with as freshmen. Miles McVay, I feel like they would have sent to me. They would have got the same type of evaluation because all three of those guys were highly talented. I think you would have had a little bit more upside and more improvement and progression with Wilkin or Miles because they were in more, uh, maybe not the biggest, but they were 
more fit to be able to get out in space and cover and block. I mean, not cover, but block. Get a hat on a helmet. They were able to move a little bit quicker. Wilkin and his footwork is so many, like it's way ahead of Caden Foster. He just didn't have the size. Then you have to likewise, I, I, man, listen, I don't like when y'all say Miro can't improve. I attack, man, I was one of the biggest, biggest critical people of Miro and his lack of ability to go through his progressions. Y'all should, if y'all weren't in my, my game day chat, then y'all, y'all don't know. I used to be on Miro neck about coming off that first read. I used to be on Miro neck about taking the lane. If the hole opened up, I don't care who's open downfield, make them respect your legs. Make them come down and have to stop you from breaking for 15 to 20 yards every time you 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 decide to run. Make the safeties, make them sit safeties on the hashes so you can get your true one-on-ones on the perimeter. Let's let's dial up some pre-snap motion so Miro can start dissecting these doggone coverages a lot sooner in phase. But even in that, you can't blame Miro half the time when he's got to go down to get the ball every snap. Adam, imagine every time you was trying to get some, right? You got a girl. Every time you're trying to get some, you got to look down there every time. You got to look down there every time. You got to sit there and try to, you know what I'm saying? That ain't good. You want a muscle memory. You want things to be fluid, right? That's as a quarterback and center with the snap exchange. That's what you want. He never got that the whole year. Open the call line, Demetrius. Ain't no call line for you. And I swear, if you get on the call line with me, I'm going to light you up, bro. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it, Demetrius. You're going to be my new favorite. Uh, What can I call you? Um, Not student. Uh, You're going to be my new project. I'm going to call you my new project. Yeah. You don't want to get on the phone with me. I'm going to tell you that right now. Hey, listen, Adam. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not... I've never, I've never said Miro was a perfect QB. Never. He has so much growth. I knew he would have a, a curve to growth. But yeah, ain't no call line open, Demetrius. And I swear you don't want this smoke, bro. Because I'm going to let you talk about seven, eight minutes. I'm going to give you a full seven, eight minutes just to talk. And when I start pulling out them big guns and putting them facts on your head, don't run from the phone. Don't run from the phone. When I pull them big guns out and put them facts on your head, because numbers don't lie. They tell you where to look. And when you look at where Caden Proctor, where the pressure came from, team scheme to go against Caden Proctor. Arkansas literally said, hey, we're going to put five, we're going to put six in the box, but five of them are going to be aligned from left guard, over left guard to doggone right tackle. Right. And we're going to give Landon Jackson one on one opportunities with Caden Proctor, one out of every three play call. And guess what they did? Landon Jackson won. 14 out of the 16 one-on-ones in that game. He won them. The five or six that Miro escaped and didn't allow pressure to touch him, he was still getting beat. Hey, Adam, not even second round. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I'm knocking them out. Easy. When it comes to this debate and stuff, when it comes to facts, talking facts, not opinion, when it comes to these players, the Bama football players, first round. I'm going to be the next Mike Tyson of this debate jump. Demetrius ain't riding us. He's riding facts, bro. Don't get in your feelings. Ain't nobody riding us. You need to ride on over to that barbershop, though. I'm going to tell you that. Ooh, on your neck. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Ain't nobody. Listen, and see, that's 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 what I know I got folks in their feelings. When I when when you start trying to roast and I get you back, and then people in the chat on your neck too because we we're talking we're debating facts not feelings. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's the quickest way to get you put on the blacklist, boy. Dino, if I'm Jake Paul, that makes you that one little uh, that makes you RuPaul. How about that, Dino? <laughs> if I'm Jake Paul, you RuPaul. Get out of here, boy. I play on me. Y'all y'all know y'all know what. Y'all know I'm undefeated when it comes to this back and forth stuff, right? I could do this for hours. I give, I wake up for this. I love confrontation. I had to learn how to talk trash because I used to just mollywop folks, slap people. 
on the bus. You talking crazy to me and my brother, slap you. I punch you. I didn't I didn't care to respect you and punch you. I was slapped. That's why I do, I kind of try to do that with this in this, you know, in this debate thing when it comes to Bama football. Oh yeah, definitely RuPaul. This man called me Jake Paul. Hey, Adam, I love people. Me too. Me too. I love it. That's why I could debate with you, man. I could debate with you. All I gotta say about that. <laughs> Y'all show that boy some love, man. Steven, tell him it's gonna be all right. You get over it. You get over it. You don't have no facts. You just got feelings, and it's okay. <laughs> uh, you got one K Proctor starts, man. Do not get become homeless betting on Proctor starting. Please, do not become homeless betting on Proctor starting. Hey, nah, see, I, I'm different. I'm different from them. I, I, I am very controversial, right? I am very, I am very controversial, okay? Kyle, Merrill, they're going to agree. They're going to play nice. Ty going to debate from a, a really debate form standpoint. I'm controversial. And I stand 10 toes down on everything that I've studied, that I look up, that I research. And you are not going to tell me one of the worst, worst, rated one of the worst rated offensive linemen in all of college football not just the sec and all of college football is going to come into a new scheme a new system he was overweight lacked the speed lacked the doggone range to get out in space and block limited us on what we can do in the run game to his side and he's going to come in after missing spring because he's not practicing spring ball at iowa right now i don't care what you do in those developments all that stuff is for like technique you got to get out there and put pads you got to get out there and learn steam you got to be live action Caden Parker's not getting it he's going to be 15 whole practices behind plus he got to lose weight he got to learn new terminology and he got to go out there and show it against all that talent on the other side of the ball that defensive line on the other side of the ball he got to go out there and show that he's able to stop like the Quay Rooster James Smith Coming off the edge, uh, if he goes, if they move in the guard, he got to stop Tim Keenan, Jalathan Jaheim Otis, Jeremiah Beeman, Curtis Perry. He got to be able to consistently stop those dudes and say, I'm ready, coach. Y'all ain't even thinking about that part. Dino, how? How? He's not even getting reps in the system. Dino, how is he going to say show the same amount of growth and he's not even being evaluated in the system that he needs to grow in. Make it make sense. This isn't fantasy football. This is real life. This young man is not at practice at Alabama right now. He can't watch film. They're not releasing film to him and saying, hey, watch this. Because this is what you know. He's going to come in after April when the fall season kicks off at late July, early July, whenever they start fall practice, right? He's got to come in and he's got to pick up everything that they've learned from day one. He's got to pick it up and try to catch up to day 16. Because that's what it'll be. It'll be day 16 of learning the new scheme, learning new offense. I'm just, we're talking logic here. We're talking real. Kendall, what am I? I ain't doing that, man. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking facts. Demetrius, had, did you play college football? Did you play college football? If I had to debate with Christian Miller right now, yes, I would tell him that he's wrong. My evaluation of these tackles, you got two young guys in Mosme Bay and Wilkin Formby competing for right tackle. You got Nikhil Bertrand and Elijah Pritchett at left tackle competing. Bertrand was a five-star. Elijah Pritchett was a highly touted four-star. Elijah Pritchett was starting in front of, uh, uh, what's the name, last year. He was starting to tackle last year until he got injured. A lot of people forget that Caden Proctor only was the starter, became the true freshman starter because Elijah Pritchett got hurt in fall camp. He could transfer in April, but you can't do any football activities after spring ball. 
everything is going to be individual when you're working you're not getting practice they're not practicing between the months of april and july let's be realistic bro and i ain't even talking about the morale part i ain't even talking about the mentality i'm talking about what he has to overcome on the field i love this Caden proctor debate y'all really twist it up y'all are tricked by media the media got y'all believing that Caden proctor is that dude we got a long way to go you know you want me to tell you i ain't say i was a better evaluator you want me to tell you how i know that my mind works just like some of those guys because everybody that was in here watching the live post practice live when christian miller came on and started talking about the 425 scheme did he not highlight every point that myself coach sean coach jay taught everything that we had talked about when we was talking about this 425 scheme and what it entails did he not did he not the quill bertrand was a three-star he came out of the portal as a four-star transfer portal i'm gonna show y'all right now Or oh, I'm thinking about LT Overton. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm thinking about LT Overton, my fault. Ooh, boy. Nikhil, boy. Ooh, I can't wait. I want to show y'all a clip, but I can't. I wait till they put it out on B roll. This shows great differences of pin making. Great. I'm telling y'all. Wasn't Elijah, but, but answer the question was Elijah Preacher starting before Caden Proctor got denied or no? <laughs> at least you know you're gonna get some effort bro you know what i'm saying oh man demetrius i disagree with him on miro and i like that he always has respectful discussions hey it is what it is demetrius ain't bringing no facts like you adam he talking about feelings show me a game where Caden proctor dominated show me a game what's up trav what's up family how you feeling bro Show me a game where Caden Proctor dominated last season. One game. What one game where Caden Proctor dominated, like for real dominated. Not did good, but dominated. I could show you a game where Jaden Roberts, Tyler Booker, Stacey Latham. I could show you a game where they dominated. Hey, he was the starter coming into the to the fall too until he got injured. And you see what happened with Caden Proctor? We didn't get we didn't get better results from Caden. I don't know what y'all thinking, bro. I don't think so. Adam, I you know what? I just I, I I I rescind my statement. He did very good because we didn't give him an opportunity to be exposed. <laughs> That's I, I will say that. Thank you, Caleb. Appreciate you. Give me for me. That's why I said Antoine. Give me for me. McVay was working with first team last time I was at practice, but give me for me. I love me some whoopie for me right now at that right tackle. A line has a problem, has been O line facts, even. And that's why I think this is a good debate. I feel like this is a good conversation to have. Caden Proctor coming back is nothing special. I, we got plenty of offensive tackles that have talent right now. So what you're saying is Nick Saban wasting talent last year. Yep. Yep. Put me on record for saying it. Yep. Sure did. Sure did. There's no way you got Seth McLaughlin at center the whole year. The whole season. And you got James Brockemeyer behind him. You didn't give Rock Montgomery an opportunity. Other players that can snap the ball and actually can. can. Come on, bro. Yes, Saban, Saban lost his touch on that one. I say that about even when he had doggone, when they had uh, Trez Marshall out there, Autumn Rips and Jahad Campbell was clearly the better, the better Co, co uh linebacker to, to Deontay Lawson. We saw the production. We saw Jeremiah Alexander get out, out there on the field and have better reaction and, and, and effectiveness at that uh that that will spot than doggone uh Trez Marshall. We saw with Henry Toy Toy. It just never clicked for him. Why he didn't get moved out the way? Why did young guys like Drew Sanders and, and Kendrick Blackshire, why they didn't get an opportunity? Right? Ian Jackson. Another athletic inside linebacker who I believe would have had similar production, if not better. Come on, man. Now we ain't moving on, Moon Rock. I like this debate. I like I like debunking it because you got to bring facts. He played our worst offensive lineman basically and threw a game. I ain't saying that he played the worst less. He he played the least experienced and uh, worst option at left tackle after he got proven that he wasn't ready. Multiple game. 
Yeah, Knee Black went to Texas, man. Knee Black down there in Texas. Them boys, they living that good life in Texas. The D-line also had, hasn't been good. Hey, I'm, I I won't contest that either. They have not been dominant. We've seen flashes. D-line has not been dominant. And you want to know why? I, I honestly believe offenses are have changed a lot. And the Gaps team has become more than void because of the lack of run game, inside run game that's being utilized amongst the majority of the offenses in our conference and against in college football. Very few teams really lean on the inside run game. And gap scheme is what the gap scheme in the nickel, that's what you used it for because there was a lot of inside run game. So anytime you could hold up a guy and contain two gaps, you don't you don't lose resources on the back end. You actually gain resources for fills, run gap filling. And Christian Miller even talked about that since you want to talk about Christian Miller. Christian Miller talked about that too. The change of concept when it is not necessarily a change of personnel. The scheme is a little different. Verbiage is a little different, but the, the main difference is up front. How you're utilizing those guys up front. We want to see a lot less gap scheme in force. Go watch the go watch the clip, man. Demetrius, when he starts, it will be after week three, week four. He will not start week one. And because you want to put your 1K up, instead of giving me the 1K, I'd rather you just donate it to Mammoth Football on YouTube. That way I can write it off. Thank you. Yeah, Pritch was definitely tripping last year. He was on some different stuff. Smook, I didn't apologize because you were in my feel because you were in my feelings. I apologize because. Okay, Steven. Mm, yeah, everybody was exposed by Michigan. Everybody. Train wreck. I never said anybody wasn't exposed by Michigan. I'm just saying. Aiden Proctor did not have a strong year at all. Four games. Four games. I never said that. Chad, did Demetrius don't, he don't like Demetrius. I'm a um, you got cash up. I cash up you some money for some Q-tip, brother. Moon Rock said, yeah, I said what I said about saving 15 years of everyone making saving. Eaters finally caught up, adding NCAA BS and saving finally got tired. He he got so behind the power glove curve with the, the um schematic adjustments, right? Talent and athleticism saved us a lot of those last three or four years of Saban's tenure, if we're being real. From 2020 all the way up until his retirement, talent has really saved us. I, I'll even go back to 2018. 2018, 2016, 2017 was probably the last uh, major boom, boom by Saban. You know what I'm saying? The last four or five years was the same. You know, and to be able to do it at, and, and still maintain, still be a top five team, top four team every year, that, that that just goes to show you what his his implementation in the college football game, how effective it was. But times change, things catch up, nuances are added where you have to make adjustments. And I think the recruiting timetable, uh, NIL, all the media changes, all of that blocked his ability to get to that level. And he didn't have a GM like like Kalen DeBoer. He didn't have that administrative staff, that deep administrative staff like Kalen DeBoer has now. So it kind of blocked his ability to get in and discover those nuances. It didn't put him behind the power curve too much, but it definitely allowed people to catch up. Uh, Smoot, do you think Olis Alanine can start? Mm, developmental piece, the huge developmental piece, huge guy, high upside start this year. I feel like if he's throwing out there, he won't be a bad option, right? If he has to go field for an injury, I think they got him at tackle right now, working at tackle, if I'm not mistaken. I think Casey Poe is the one working at guard. I got to go look at that lineup again. I got to look at my chart. I think they had Alanine at tackle. <laughs> I teach at it. Oh, man. Thanks, man. I like, I like that. I like that assessment, too. We should still have beat Michigan. The bust on the defense cost us the game, like on fourth and two and the touchdowns we busted. Exactly, man. Defense. Saban's, I think the lack of Saban's confidence to just stick with it, like Kevin Steele wanted to. And, and I I do I will say this. I think Kevin Steele retiring was a was a thing of like, man, it's just changing too much. I'm, I'm kind of over it. Saban, I appreciate you, but let me go ahead and chill out. But I think Kevin still wanted to go to that old school match, like 
let us be dogs and athletes, keep everything in front of us, crash on everything. Because games when we did that, that's when we were going crazy. And nah, uh, I won't say that. I won't say that. That first one, when Kool-Aid carried past the hash, that wasn't on down. Kool-Aid's supposed to pass that off. That's obvious. But I don't think Corum even really, he had those two big runs and that was it, you know? Um, definitely was solid. Brooker, Alanine, Brock, Rails, Roberts, Formby, left or right? Hmm. Nah, because Booker not at tackle right now. Right now at tackle, they got um they got uh Pritchett and Bertrand over there. That would be a solid group though. But my thing is I don't think they have any aspirations of sliding Booker back out to tackle. Which is weird to me. I think he would do good. What up, LB? How you feeling? Good to see you, family. Leaving Proctor off that list for a reason. <laughs> Get out of here, man. Another Proctor supporter. Get out of here, man. I'm telling y'all, that man got so much work to do. Max Steven. We're talking about him. I, I feel stupid because he's not even on the team yet. He say he's coming back. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, whatever, Demetrius. I can't wait to bet. I, I feel like I'm going to take a lot of your money. We're going to get to bed in this season. I'm going to take a lot of your money. You easy work. Kendrick Law is better at, at left tackle than Kenny Proctor. I'm telling you. <laughs> yes, Casey Poe is different. And I wonder, do we play him at guard or does he get out there to the left tackle? You're talking about a big, big guy, athletic, just young, man. He's going to continue to, to develop. His body is still developing. A lot of baby weight, right? Yeah. You're going to see him continue to develop. Mm-hmm. Talk about it, Adam. Adam, talk about michigan's d-line and how they attacked us did they did they really attack us from latham and robert's side did they really attack the gap between that well i will say that they did attack that gap between steph and booker booker had a rough first quarter right but everybody seemed to tighten up in that game but proctor and steph at some point point. Hey, you put me a left tackle i'm gonna be worse than proctor i'm gonna tell you that he gave up 14 average. I'm going to give up 15 and a half average. Guaranteed. Better better know it. They attacked Booker. They attacked Booker early. And you see that they made an adjustment when he started seeing it. And I think if you watch that game too, when we talk about film study, Booker was doing too much of trying to pass off early. He wasn't being uh, gap disciplined and, and securing the gap before he was passing things off. He was jumping the gun because of film study thinking he saw things and mentor the quarterback the coordinator the d coordinator for michigan he did a good job scheming up and then looks at those guys zero chance and, and then he had 11 or 12 that that put him in com controversial position what dixon say what dixon <laughs> nah don't put me at left tackle brother <laughs> But y'all, great night, great discussion, great debate. Uh, I know y'all probably tired of me dogging Tyler Book. I mean, not Tyler Booker, Caden Proctor. I'm not dogging him, man. I'm just being a realistic guy. Just like I am about Ryan Williams. You know, I think Ryan Williams is going to be a great player. Is he going to start first day on his campus? No, no way. No way. You don't even want to do that today, young man. You want to give him a chance to get acquainted to the college football game, college football lifestyle. Caden Proctor has to come in and learn a whole new scheme, a whole new not necessarily a whole new culture, but there's a culture change happening, mentality change on the, on the offensive line. Um, Jaden Roberts even alluded to it during our interview. You know, everybody got to go out there and win your, win your reps. You got to dominate the guy across from you. And Caden Proctor didn't do that a lot last year. I'm just saying. So if we talking just from that mold of things, that's what it is, man. Appreciate y'all for hanging out with your boy. Uh, it's your boy, Coach Smoot. Again, shout out to all the supporters, all the... Uh, all the uh the the sponsors we got uh residents in the ocean city we got rogueshop.com and we got demetrius maynard of the manor group appreciate y'all for supporting the channel and doing what y'all do all the fan funders who paid for their fan funding appreciate y'all all the ones that put up and donate to the life uh and we had uncle jay donates um we had caitlin donates um 
uh, we had a few. We had a few people donate some. If you can pick one up, congrats to you. Thank those guys. Um, but yeah, man. Appreciate y'all for hanging out with me tonight. We powered through it, y'all. We powered through it. We got it done. We got the segment done. Great controversial uh, segment. I like it. I like it. I invite it. You can go back up again. You make me feel so good about my knowledge of the game. I just feel good. I feel good do, man. Um, but shout out to everybody, man. Everybody. Adam. Love our debate. Carla. Um, Clint. That's one. Louis. Big Tony. Fun. Everybody. Auntie Janet. Everybody that pulls up every day, man. Uh, I appreciate you. Listen, and this is this is another reason why I like debating with you. But look at what Booker got recruited as coming out of high school. Mm. 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 Somebody tell him. Somebody tell him what Booker was was getting recruited as out of high school. Mm. What was Booker playing at his freshman year, guys? Somebody tell him so he can stop feeling bad. <laughs> Somebody tell him. What was he getting recruited as? <laughs> big homie. Somebody tell him. And big homie follow recruiting heavy. So before you try to tread, before you try to step on them steps, make sure you know what you're talking about. Hey, hey, ASG. Hey, yay. Hey, hey. I, I am. I'm going to ask Clinton I'm about Proctor. As a matter of fact, I'm going to um, hit him up after I get off here. Uh, Demetrius, you're going to have a long season dealing with me, bro. I'm telling you. Pull back up, though. Appreciate y'all showing love. Hey, it's been fun. And with that being said, I'm going to leave y'all with a chill roll tide roll. Got to get up out of here. Much love, y'all.